And ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the prosecution is not going to get that man today. No. Because I'm going to get him. This is the Hagman and Hagman Report at a special time this Wednesday, June 26, 2013 edition of the Hagman and Hagman Report. I'm Doug Hagman, co-host with my son, Joe Hagman. Together, we are the Hagman and Hagman Report. Folks, buckle your seat back, uh, your seat belts, and make sure your tray tables and seat backs are in their full upright and locked position because we've got a great show for you tonight. Joining us tonight will be Mr. Steve Quayle from stevequayle.com and the Gorilla Economist, otherwise known as V. Folks, you're listening to the only show where we present the news to you in three dimensions. We look beyond the headlines and bylines and bring you the news behind the news and the white noise of the headlines. We broadcast live each and every weeknight from 8 to 11 p.m. Eastern Time, except when we don't. Like tonight, we broadcast 9 to midnight. Um, you can find us at our home base. It's homelandsecurityus.com. That's homelandsecurityus.com. And we're also simulcast by the good, gracious, good graces of the Christians United Broadcasting Network at uh, thehagmanandhagmanreport.com. You've got to spell that out, thehagmanandhagmanreport.com. And Hagman is with two N's. And, of course, you have to spell out the and, no spaces, which, again, is thehagmanandhagmanreport.com. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us tonight. Thank you for your belief and your trust in us as we walk through this minefield together. Joe, welcome. Yeah, glad to be here. And uh, before we get into... Uh, and before we bring on Steve and V, I just want to hit one piece of news here that I find very disturbing and sad. Um, sickens me to the core. The National Cathedral rings bells to cheer gay marriage. The Supreme Court today went down on its or ruled on its decision uh, on gay marriage, and the National Cathedral is ringing its church bells along with other Washington churches to celebrate the Supreme Court's decision on gay marriage. Cathedral spokesman Richard Weinberg said the bells rang at noon Wednesday, 45 minutes to an hour. Bells also rang at Episcopal, Methodist, Presbyterian, and Unitarian Christian churches as well. The cathedral scheduled a prayer service for gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgendered families for Wednesday at 7 p.m. to celebrate the ruling. Folks, Folks what? Uh, yeah, I just want to say this: we don't use it, there are we the Hagman Hagman report is just a few rules. Number rule number one: Google is not a verb, and number two, gay is not a reference to homosexuality. We use the word homosexual when we when we uh, talk about gay. Yeah, I'm I'm reading from the article here. Um, In a statement, the cathedral's dean, the Reverend Gary Hill, says the church is ringing the bells to celebrate the extension of federal marriage equality to all the same-sex couples modeling God's love in lifelong covenants. I do agree that uh, God's love extends to all sinners who are repenting and uh, trying to better their life. But to continue to be actively engaged in rebellion and sin um he might still love you but he definitely does not love your behavior that is not something that's need to be celebrated especially by quote unquote christian institutions and that's i've, all I've been to the national cathedral in washington dc i've knelt at the national cathedral at washington dc this is apostasy ladies and gentlemen I, I, I spoke with, by the way, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on Friday, we're going to have author extraordinaire Daniel Holdings joining us. He's the author of As the Darkness Falls, among other books. His website is danielholdings.com. But I talked with him this morning, and uh, 
I've got to tell you, um, Christians need to be bold. We need to take a stand. It is beyond the time for tolerance of evil as evil, as tolerance itself becomes evil when we tolerate evil. With that, we, we, yeah, Joe, we're, we're called over you. We're not supposed to hate the people. We're supposed to hate the sin. Uh, we're still supposed to love the people, but we don't have to accept what they're doing as proper or anything, uh, you know, like they proclaim in this national cathedral as it is some kind of victory for Christians. That is completely a misleading statement. And the people who are attending these churches with these preachers who are ringing their bells in celebration of this should flee these churches as soon as possible. And with that, we're going to bring on our guests. First, I'm going to bring on Steve. Steve, I know you had this story on your website tonight, uh, or today. Um, you got anything you want to say on, about this story before we get into the, our show? Yeah, I want to share that uh, I, I've been just uh, sensing uh, such a great spirit of grief and mourning. And, Joe, at 6.08 tonight, and I was praying about tonight's show. We're not going to talk about this tonight, what the Lord gave me. Uh, I haven't had a prophecy given to me in two years this strong and forceful. The last time I, and, and in case people don't know, I'm not a prophet, but the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And it's unlike most of the prophets that are out there. And for those of you that uh, have gone to my website, stevequail.com, I encourage you to go and read the, the prophetic words that God has given to me over the years. They're usually separated by a couple of years. But the Lord absolutely, uh, I will share this, on, on Sunday night when Pastor Langford, and there's a reason I'm not sharing it tonight, okay? I don't share anything until it sets with my spirit and I get the okay. The Lord said, not tonight, Steve, Sunday. Tonight I want you to absolutely give the last. And, and when I say the last, I'm not saying that God's saying that everything falls down next week. But it's so imperative. But when I got the thing about this, about the uh, National Cathedral of my spirit, do you know what the Lord calls it? He calls it the Sanctuary of Satan. Now, wow. those are words that I have never used concerning the National Cathedral. I was a little bit more guttural and blunt, and for the sake of brevity and uh, not taking away from tonight's topic, but on Sunday night, the Lord willing, Doug, I have about a three or four pager, my, depending on how my handwriting types out, and like I say, uh, thank those of you who are praying for my eyes because my eyes are just, you know, just giving me fits. Uh, so the thing is, is that I will share it. But, Joe, all I can say to you is this. The fury of the Lord, the fury of the Lord is over this land. And if God's people don't understand his holiness, his justice, and the history of the Old Testament, I have seen nothing but disgusting emails from supposedly Christians coming into my box, my email box all the time, saying, give it up, Steve, you don't need to go there. No, I need to go there because God's judgment will fall on the National Cathedral. You mark my words. I don't know when, I don't know how, but I can tell you this. The Lord basically gave me three to four pages of a very specific word concerning what he's going to do now. And ladies and gentlemen, this is not a laughing matter. This isn't even a matter of uh, political correctness. This is direct defiance of the holiness of the living God, the high and holy one. And I will share this, one part of it. He said, the jury of heaven has already decided, I will now move. You see, God has given us space to repent and space to repent. And he also gave a very strong word. But, Doug, I'll just share this with you. I, I would hope that Sunday night, Pastor Langford... And I are going to basically be talking about turning your eyes upon Jesus and what that really means to be transformed by the Spirit and the power of the living God. We all need to be transformed. Thank the Lord he isn't leaving me in the mess that uh, I've made of my life. And thank God for all of you intercessors. I want you to know that when I say thank you, I mean it with all my heart. And thank you for praying for V's safety. Thank you for praying, praying for Doug and Joe's safety and Pastor Langford's safety. Because, ladies and gentlemen... Some of you don't even know that there be anything such as front lines. Well, we're on them tonight. And with that said, the financial world is facing the most cataclysmic and tumultuous upheaval yet ever seen in the history of the world, because even empires were usually geographically confined to their own boundaries, even if they were conquering. They still had limitations. Now we are without limitations. And when the Bible says, whoa, 
unto you, inhabitants of the earth. And when the Bible goes into great detail in the book of Revelation about no man being able to buy, sell, or trade except he take the mark of the beast and the number of his name, I cannot tell you, I have never seen such a wimpier portrayal in my emails, Doug, and you know, I am more than happy to send them to you, and such total uh, denial of the faith and lack of understanding of the character and nature of God. So Sunday night, that's what we're going to be talking about, and I'll send you the official title. But as V and I were talking, and we talked early this morning, we are in uh, such a state of flux that even Jim Rogers, quote, this is too insane, and I'm afraid we're all going to suffer for the rest of this decade. My goal is that not only that you don't suffer for the rest of the decade in your plans, hopes, dreams, but you don't suffer eternally. So I'd like to turn over to V because I've asked V to address the whole issue of what's really going on. And, you know, when we tell people that the dollar's lost 97% of the purchasing power, somebody says, well, wages have increased. Well, if you take the actual wages and put them into the same context as the dollar uh, of yesterday, listen, literally, people who think they're making $20, $25 an hour are making $2.5 an hour in the old context. And so, obviously, the middle class is destroyed. I want to say something. You can no longer say is going to be or is in the process of being. It's done. It's finished. It's over. And it's amazing that most people cannot break free of their routine and bias and their what I would call Keynesian training to see the forest through the trees. The forest can be on fire, and people say, well, as long as it's not burning my house down, I don't care, because they wouldn't make the effort to make sure there were no fires that were capable of burning anyone's house down. They will care. Unfortunately, it's going to be at the cost of, of, unless they repent, their eternal destiny, but their early existence is going to be shortened dramatically. So, V, let's talk tonight about the dragon, what's going on, and lay out for people Make this complex economic theory that's really basically simple, which says that they've sold us a bunch of uh, bull manure, packaged it in derivatives, but let's share what's going on with China, because China owns us now, and we are literally the uh, servant of the lender, and all of the deals being cut in three-day meetings between the uh, president of China and the president of the United States, I think most people would vomit if they knew what took place. Go ahead, V. Well, it's uh, great to be uh, back uh, with you guys again, and uh, uh, it's been uh, pretty much a very, very, very hectic uh, trading day uh, over at Wall Street. The past week or so has been absolutely insane, Uh, just as I feared and just as I talked about many times on the broadcast when I said, hey, you know, look for them to take down gold and silver. Uh, These are the levels that's going to be at. They could even take it even further down. Um, and we're there. You know, we are right now. The you know, folks, what's happening is 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 nobody is selling. Okay, I'm going to repeat this again. Nobody is selling physical gold or silver. It's just nobody's selling it. All they're doing is just a paper dump, getting all the chickens afraid, getting all the suckers back into the bond market. Because what I feared, ha- you know, is going to happen is it already happened and it's happening now. We're we're seeing massive bond sell-offs in the U.S. bond market, and that's occurred all last month, and it's occurring this month as well, and uh, there, is a, there is a panic. There is definitely a panic in the bond market because now the uh, question of uh, America's credibility is coming into play. See, folks, there, there's something that's very important here, okay? The, the, the current state of, uh, of the economy globally is basically a system based upon confidence, right? Confidence in the fact that when you're putting your money and your investments in a country, that that country is able to provide you a reasonable rate of return on your investment. That country has a stable enough government in order for your investment to be secure. And that country's monetary policy is not an insane, lunatic-type policy, that their policy monetarily is sound. We have lost, for the first time in the history of this country, we have lost all three. The world now sees us for the lunatics that we are. The world now sees us for the Ponzi scheme that we are. And the shame on us. 
shame on us, the public, for sitting here and allowing our good name to be dragged through the mud by sold-out, bought and paid for politicians who care not what happens to this great land. This is what we've come to. We've come to the point where our monetary policies, people see it, that when we begin to manipulate gold and silver in our banks, the Chinese look and laugh. When we begin to manipulate the gold, the real hard assets that are being sold and bought globally, and we begin to beat down the price below the actual cost it costs to unearth the metal, the Chinese go ahead and laugh. The Indians look at us like we're crazy, and the Russians look at us and they snicker. Because they understand that, folks, the emperor is not only having no clothes, but the emperor is no longer emperor. We are a pauper. We are a, we're a peasant who is currently trying to pretend to be a king. What's going on in China? You see, I'm hearing a lot of reports. I mean, it's all over the, the Wall Street Journal. It's on the, uh, the Economist, the Bloomberg, uh, Reuters. They're all talking about, oh, credit crisis in China. Oh, China's shadow banking system. 99.99% of these idiots have no idea what China's ba shadow banking system really is. Okay? And I'm going to explain that to you, and I'm going to show you how screwed we are in the process. China's banking, shadow banking, is this. There's two banking systems. First is the regular banking system with regulated and sanctioned banks that function as, you know, traditional banks would. Okay, you can put your deposits there, you get your transactions, you move it to different various types of investment vehicles. Then you have the shadow banking group. And the shadow banking at the lowest level is basically, I mean, it could be somebody who's a pawn, who is a pawn shop owner. He's a pawn broker. He can loan you money. Sometimes it's a leasing company. They're able to lease you some money that, you know, and, 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 uh, or, or some sort of collateral for a loan or, or a project that you need to do. But oftentimes it's an insurance firm. But the biggest component in China's shadow banking, which are equivalent to the biggest banks in China, are the trust companies. And now these trust companies, there's, there's about three big major ones, okay? These trust companies are not only established by the state and provincial governments and backed by the governments in China, which, by the way, folks, when they talk about, oh, there's a credit crisis in China, let me tell you something. I wouldn't worry about it. China, the, especially the shadow banking industry in China, has ample liquidity. It has they are swimming in liquidity. They have enough liquidity to cover those risks. I would not worry about it. It is, for the most part, fear-mongering to get either some Chinese or Western investors out of China and back into the U.S. bond market, which I told you that they're going to try and do that. Okay? The other thing about shadow banking, okay, it's basically backed by China's treasury, which also happens to be the biggest hoarder of cash in the world, okay? Nobody has more cash on hand than China's treasury. Nobody has more liquidity in the world than China's shadow banking. So people don't really understand how many loans are going on. That's all private. That's all sometimes on the books. It's sometimes off the books. It's not even reported because the, the trust companies that are in China are not like trust companies over here in the U.S. where you sit down with a guy and you ask them some questions and uh, they might give you a plan for some investments. No, no, no. The Chinese trust companies behave and act like investment banks, but with none of the regulations and really none of the risks. Okay. Now, because they act like investment banks, they're able to go ahead and fund projects all over. The, one of the biggest trust companies there is called CITIC, C-I-T-I-C, -I -I okay? And CITIC is pretty interesting. The companies are run by a gentleman by the name of Rong Yairen, okay? And the Yairen uh, family is one of the wealthiest families in China. It is an elite member of, Ch of China's echelon these people are, have money like you would not believe. In fact, the Iran family during the 30s and the 40s 
where China's capitalist industrialists who stayed behind when uh, in mainland China, when Chiang Kai-shek and the and the democratic component, you know, made a beeline to Taiwan. Okay, so Cynic is run by the one of the wealthiest families in China, but also known as the Red Capitalists. The other trust company is called Ping An Trust. That's part of China's largest insurance company, Ping An Insurance. Then you have China Industrial International Ltd. It's owned by it's state owned, okay, by Industrial Bank Co. Uh, company of China. Now the banks and trusts work very, very closely together, okay. So when you're hearing reports of oh, there's a bubble here, there's a bubble there. What about China? Look, with China, I'm going to make it real simple. China has two banking systems, and the simplest law that you guys need to remember is this: the more diversified a system is the more resilient it is. And folks, you will not find, the way right now China is set up, you will not find a more resilient economic system in the world in the terms of they are ready for a crash. They are ready for the dollar to unhinge itself. They are ready for America to lose its superpower status. They are ready for the economy of the U.S. to go down. And they are ready for themselves to take a hit because they know that some of these bubbles have to burst but those bubbles that they've created, they knew they had to create those bubbles in order to get ahead of the U.S. They knew they about those bubbles. Those bubbles are basically sacrificial lands. So they're willing to take a hit, but they've, they've prepared for it. How did they prepare for it? Well, about 15 years ago, they started buying up gold and silver at a ravenous pace. 15 years ago, they started buying up rare earth minerals at a ravenous pace. Fifteen years ago, they started buying out strategic metals at a pace unseen before. That's how they're ready. So they're ready for this whole thing. So when we go down, they're going to be there ready and waiting to fill the void that's been left. And how are they going to fix some of these issues? How are they going to fix uh, the erratic behavior of the yuan in, in, in terms of a global currency reset? Oh, it's simple. You just back up the yuan with gold. You back it up with gold, and all of a sudden, all the bubbles go away. All of a sudden, you, br br you bring in discipline to your monetary system. All of a sudden, you create proper valuation of all your assets and equities. But a bing, but a boom. Problem solved. That's what China's going to do. That's what they're ready. Folks, this dragon doesn't blow bubbles. We do. We're the idiot kid walking down the street with his bubble machine blowing bubbles, making people believe that it's actually more than what it is. Not the Chinese. They figured out our game. And you want to know something else? The rest of the world has figured us out as well. We don't have a stable economy. Our government, because of this whole NSA scandal, the whole world sees our government for the two-faced fraud that it is. We have an administration that has zero respect globally. This guy, uh, Obama, wants the, this guy, Edward Snowden, he wants the Chinese to give it up. Chinese basically tell him to go fly a kite. The kid all of a sudden gets on a plane, goes over to Moscow. Obama asks, and Kerry gets on his knees, puts on his knee pad and begs. And then the Russian, uh, Vladimir Putin over there, tells this guy to go take a hike, go fly a kite, go jump in a lake. And now even Ecuador is coming their nose at us. We are a joke. And I hope you guys hear this. I hope you people listening online right now and on the radio understand this. We are a joke. It's over. And you can see the, 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 the dumping that's occurring in the bond market. You can see the flight that's taking place already, number one. And number two, the question right now becomes, the question, the multi, the $650 trillion derivative question, folks, is how soon before the two big to fail decide to dump their bonds? How soon before Japan pops? And this whole thing really gets crazy. That's the, the 650 or $1.5 quadrillion uh, dollar question of the day. Steve? Steve. Well, I think that what V is, is presenting is reality. And I have long maintained that the intelligence agencies, and I think... Uh, a certain individual is probably listening to this that would say amen, to divorce people from their past, to divorce them from history, to steal their faith, to take away the very foundations of the country, that's all been done. 
and it's been done through that sewage pit called uh, public education. Now, I know there are some good teachers, and I'm not railing against Christian believing teachers that have taught to make a difference. But unfortunately, we are at the time period now where we have become a hissing, H-I-S-S-I-N-G. Doug, I don't know if you guys remember this, but I think it was four or five years ago, and if I'm off on years, I don't mean to be, but I started saying that the Lord had spoken to me that the world would hold the United States in such contempt that the word hissing, and there actually is a scripture, and I'll look for it uh, in a minute, but this is critical for people to understand. Body language said a lot when you saw Vladimir Putin, and there's a chance, Doug, and I'm just saying, I, well, I won't go there, but a certain Russian broadcasting company wants to come to Bozeman and interview me, and I'm praying about it, and I'd like the intercessors to pray about that. They want to interview me about ancient civilizations and all that stuff. Now, why do I bring this up? Not to say whoopee. It's to say this. I have a, a good friend uh, uh, through who's the editor of, obviously, Pravda. When I say a good friend, a professional friend, I've never met him in, in uh, person. But what is ironic is you have... Obama destroying Western civilization and Christianity. You have the Russians through the Orthodox Church, and I'm not, I'm not, how do I say this? I'm not sanctioning everything that Russia does, but it's ironic that they're standing against the very thing that brings the destruction of Almighty God upon a land. So when people tell me, and, and Joe, you brought it up too, that it sickened you about the national, see, what, what we have become is a laughing stock. There's actually a word that means a gazing stock. It means you're looking at something that's prepared for the slaughter. You're beholding that. It would be like if you're watching an, uh, uh, oh, good night, a slaughterhouse, and you see all the cattle being run in the chute, and you know what the end is, is hamburger. But the point that I'm making about where everything is upside down is the fact that America, there is no asset base. One of the things that V and I will address tonight is mortgages. Any of us, and I have a mortgage, I want people to understand that, any of us who have a mortgage are subject to whoever that mortgage has been sold to. And primarily, it's either going to be the Chinese or the Middle East that own most of the mortgages in America. And there are specific clauses in that, and it would be almost like uh, if, the, if our currency collapsed and there was nothing to back up our currency, the mortgage holders could call our mortgages due. So that means that unless most people recognize and remember this stuff, the Chinese were allowed in this country, and, and a, in essence, uh, under uh, co uniform commercial code and international law, to perfect their liens and to take their collateral. If, if V and I could get across to you tonight that not only have the Americans sold their birthright, but everything the Founding Fathers established by covenant, and God honored those who honored him, the, I, I'm not going to argue with anybody. You cannot tell me that America was great because of the policies that are destroying it. The definition of insanity is absolutely do, doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. We have become a hissing in the nations of the world. You know when you can't even use American dollars in tourist attractions in India, but you have to go to the central bank and get them uh, converted to rupees, and the first place to do that was the Taj Mahal, that we are in a, a period of, I would say this, the only two words that come to my mind when I see how the world reacts is contempt and disgust. Just like those who honor God, it's the favor of the Lord. It was the favor of the Lord that built this country. And I'm telling you one, I'm one voice, but I'm furious at the cowardice, the surrender, the naivety, the ignorance, and the political correctness of that which calls itself the church. Let's just be honest. They're whoring themselves out, and they're absolutely whores. And let God establish the, the uh, I would say this, the veracity of that statement. When you prostitute yourself, when you sell out, when you must absolutely embrace the, uh, the entire banquet table of hell at the expense of the presence of the living God and his blessing, then we are of all people damned and lost. Saying that, 
I have contacts all over the world. It's not me. I'm not saying, whoopee, I know a lot of famous people. I'm saying those people who hear the truth of the radio broadcast on Hagman and Hagman, they contact me. How can I contact someone I've never met before unless they make themselves known to me? So when we're talking about what V just told you, I don't think most people understand. All the official gold holdings are Bravo Sierra. In other words, they're nothing but lies. China has the greatest treasure trove of gold of any nation in the world. And the Chinese had trillionaires while America made billionaires. The only exception would be that would be the Rothschilds and Rockefellers. But the Chinese dynasties have had, you know, they talk about old money. Well, you can take the Rothschild dynasty back maybe four or 500 years. You can take the Chinese dynasty and the families and the money and the wealth for multi-thousands of years. So what we're trying to give everyone tonight is a reality check because it is my contention, and before anybody else, now look, everybody's on uh, you know, a zero hedge or this or that, market watch, blah, 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 talking about you know, the Chinese could uh, back their yuan with gold. I said it 20 years ago. People said I was crazy. Now, why am I saying that? It's because God has given us two decades to repent. God has warned us, not only for due Two decades. He's warned us through the mouth of uh, of the prophets of old. He's warned us through the scripture. He's warned us through uh, so so many people that were sold out to him that what was going to come, and yet it's come. And the church, I used to say, they do three things really well: they yawn, they burp, and they break wind. Okay. Now again, I'm not talking about the body of Christ. I'm not talking about the bride of Christ. I'm talking about a horrific monster that claims to be representing the king of glory and only surrenders to the prince of hell. So this is critical. I'm using the most apocalyptic language that the Lord will give me in my tongue tonight. Because, again, I, I, know, I know why the scripture screams out, Awake, awake thou who dwellest in the dust. It's one thing to be created out of it, but it's another thing that, uh, you know, to, to surrender to the breath that gave the dust life and let him lead us and guide us. This broadcast goes worldwide. I cannot tell you how many people in different countries, and, and they're captains of industry, some of them, some of them are incredibly wealthy, but they're knowing something. They're hearing truth. Truth is God's. We are vessels. If God pours through his truth through us, it's God's truth. And I, I get so tired, I have never met, and I, I like what V and I both are agreed on, and I'll, I'll turn it over to you, V, that the jackals and hyenas, do you know what they're both famous for? They can only yelp and tear apart that which is dead or dying. Those of you who still persist in not recognizing lateness, I even had an ignoramus send me, and he was an ignoramus, Send me an email saying, well, what's different now than uh, later? I've heard all this stuff for 20 years. Yeah, you were given space to repent, and judging by your question, you still haven't got it. V, is there any, is there any doubt in your mind that this nation, it's over, it's through, it's finished, and people still want to believe, well, they get the right man in office. Hey, you got a Congress and a Senate who is so horrified, W-H-O-R-I-F-I-E-D, probably not the right way to spell it, who is so compromised, who is so seduced by evil, who are such profane uh, 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 expressions of hellish behavior that I don't care, you can put a three-piece suit on a chimpanzee and probably get a better behavior out of the chimpanzee than you can out of Congress and Senate. And to say total contempt, there's no word. How about this, eternal contempt? because they have destroyed the country. They're selling out. And even I've, I've talked to Russians. Doug, you've heard me say this on the radio. I've talked to guys who were spies after the breakup. So if you uh, yeah. and they say, at least when we sell out our country, we sell it out for millions. Your countrymen sell it out for thousands. Well, I can't argue with that. Some of the biggest cases, including Pollard, they weren't in the millions. They were in you know the tens of thousands. So saying that, America... You are in dire straits. And, I, I, you know, you can look for the, uh, the political turnaround. Well, I just can't wait until the election. You won't make it that long unless God grants time out. And I believe that based on the uh, word that I got tonight and the 
confirming testimony through so many people that are really seeking the Lord and interceding. Somebody said, why are all your alerts so gloomy and doomy? It's because this is a dark and dreary day, and we're facing total destruction. Go ahead, V. You know, it was uh, Thomas Jefferson that said uh, something along the lines of this, and I'm paraphrasing here. He said, if you, can, if you think you can live ignorant and free, you need to think again. And you know what? To tell people that this country is done, let me tell you something, guys. Here's, here's the thing. Everybody that's listening to my voice right now, it's over. It's finished. It's done. There's no hope for this country to ever turn back. There's no hope for this economy to come back. Now, you could do all the marching you want to do. You can take your open carry pistols and show up in, uh, in some, uh, you know, uh, town hall and yell and scream and hold up some signs and, 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 you know, and say that you're free. Let me tell you something. It's way past that point. You know, some of you morons out there think you have some sort of revolution on your hands. Okay, good luck with that. <laughs> good luck with that. Because let me tell you something. The only way to fix this nation... The only way to fix this nation is spiritually. If, if you guys will put down your picket signs and stop all of a sudden, I don't, I don't get the American mail. I really don't. You guys checked out 50 years ago. Most of you are hooked on porn and drugs. Now all of a sudden you want to pick up some picket signs? You want to put a gun in your backpack and act like a tough guy in March in Washington? What a joke. What a pathetic joke. What the men of this in the country needs to do is get back to the God that has called this country. Get back to the God who has formed this country. And get back to the principles that have founded and, and steered this country for the last 200 years. If we're able to get back on our knees and repent, that is the only way to get this nation back. And you're hearing that from the sound of a voice of a financial analyst telling you this. To get back. To get back to the Lord. That is the only thing, because we're, we're done. They're, like, you know, Steve says it so beautifully, and, and I haven't heard anybody else say it so well. There are no political solutions for spiritual problems. And that's what we have. We have a massive spiritual problem. We're a joke. We're a festering, putrid mess that the world just wants to get rid of us. Do you guys understand that? The Chinese and the Russians look at us with contempt. We're pathetic. They just want to get rid of us. We treat our veterans like trash. We treat our active, uh, active duty soldiers like guinea pigs. We don't even give them health benefits. You know, I was reading that suicide letter from that soldier who decided to pop himself because of all the because he just he would rather end his life because of all the horror and trauma that he witnessed in multiple tour after tour. I don't even know eight, ten tours in Iraq. And he felt the only way that he can't, he can't even fix himself because his mind is so rattled. And rather than continue to do human atrocities, he decided to off himself. And I read that letter. I said, my God, this is what we've come to. This is what we've come to. Well, we've got a punk, a punk little boy as president running around who gets punked by other nations, who, have, who people are doing to respect the guy. It's Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We have an economic system that's a total joke. The people today are, you know, the, the, the housing prices are, are, were up last month 11%. People think they have money. Oh, look, housing recovery. What recovery? You got 34 million homes in shadow inventory. You got interest rates. The worst thing that can happen right now, interest rates. Steve, have you seen the 30 years? They're about 4.5% now. It's a jump of, of, of 50, 60 basis points. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. And the people, the amount of investors that are shook and scared right now, they don't know where to go. Because right now the market is so volatile. It's in such disarray that the smart investors, the savvy ones are, what are they doing? They're continuing to buy up gold. They're buying up arrogable farmland. They're doing what they can do in order to shelter and protect themselves from what is to come. And then you got people wondering, oh, you know. 
Yeah. You, you, you know, V and and Steve, um, I, I've just I've just got to say this. It, it certainly it's one of two things uh, that's taking place in America. Uh, aside from the obviously the spiritual bankruptcy that we're in. Number one, where we're at right now, we got to by accident, which I highly doubt. Or number two, it is a orchestrated and orchestrated destruction of our economy. You know, after all, Ben Bernanke scored 1590s on his SATs, so he can't be stupid. Uh, and Obama, professor of his uh, law, uh, Harvard Law School. So we are witnessing, are we not, the orchestrated killing, the actual killing of our economy, of our sovereignty? Is this not an act of murder? Absolutely. You know, I was on the phone today with one of my clients in Germany. And, uh, Joe, if you're listening, how you doing out there? But uh, anyway, uh, one of the things that I told him is that because of what's going on in Germany, and I'll get to the what's going on with the Eurozone and how and how bail-ins are becoming the standard of Western banking. And it's going to come all, and it's already coming over here. I'll get to that. But, you know, what's happening, folks, is not an accident. Okay, they want to make you believe that this is all happenstance and accident and uh, this is something that was started and it got out of control because some mortgages were sold to people who had no idea what they were signing. Give me a break. Give me a break. They say that to you because they think you're stupid. Look, these are the guys. Okay, I've been around some of these guys. They have utter contempt for you. They have utter contempt for you. They don't even care about you. You're pathetic to them. And they think you're so stupid and that you're so prone to, to happenstance and believing in accidents that, that, that you know, they sell you the story. Folks, the only, the only two options you have is this. Either A, we are here today in this economic mess because it is a giant accident. Okay? But you and I both know especially in the inner workings of your mind, that part of your brain that still works, that this is a mathematical impossibility, that all these events will suddenly become uh, a, a, a massive problem. You can't have an accident. An accident is you have one little issue, it, it's, it's done, and a couple months later the market recovers. No, this is a controlled demolition of the United States economy. So the only options are either, hey, it's, a, it's an accident, which it's a mathematical impossibility. So the only thing that's left with you is that these morons who are in control, they're really not morons. They're actually downright evil. And that's the choice you're left with. That your nation, your life, your future, your children's future is being sold out by a bunch of sold out evil people. And that's the nicest way I could put it. Steve? Well, again, how do I say this? When you don't understand the spiritual nature of the war and that the powers in the heavenlies, all earthly kingdoms are ruled by heavenly and, and, and I would say evil to the degree that a nation is walking with God in his ways and his statutes and his judgments and in caring for the broken, the downtrodden. And look, I'm the furthest guy from being Pollyanna. I hate Pollyanna. The story, I used to have a series of uh, uh, radio shows, and I think I did three or four of them, and I said, Pollyanna does the end times. In other words, you cannot even begin to uh, uh, deal with, with the reality if you've got a maple syrup attitude. But interesting, let me share something with you guys out of Ezekiel 27:36, because this is something that's amazing to me. What V is describing as the world's financial centers and the people behind them, it says this, the merchants among the people shall hiss at thee. Thou shalt be a terror and never shall be any more. Or how about this, Jeremiah eighteen sixteen? You think God doesn't have a handle on the economies? To make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing, everyone that passeth thereby shall be astonished and wag his head. I've literally seen, V, Doug, and Joe, people wagging their head. They, they, they shake it. Wagging your head means moving it back and forward. When you, when you try and engage someone in intelligence conversation and they become frustrated to the point that their understanding leaves them, they shake their head. 
Or how about Jeremiah 19.8, and I'll make the city desolate and a hissing. Everyone that passes thereby shall be astonished and hiss because of the plagues thereof. How about this one? Jeremiah 25, 9, Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land, and against the inhabitants therefore, or excuse me, thereof, and against all these nations round about, and will utterly destroy them, and make them an astonishment, and a hissing, and perpetual desolations. And then Jeremiah twenty nine eighteen, and I will persecute them with a sword, with famine, and with pestilence, and will deliver them to be removed to all the kingdoms of the earth. That's what David Langford's talking about captivity. To be a curse and astonishment and a hissing and a reproach among all the nations, whether I have driven them. There was a time and I, I, I am so sick of liberal vomit, putrefying puke at the mouth of ignorant uh, God-hating uh, monsters that they can get away with celebrating the, the very events that brought destruction. By the way, it wasn't just Sodom and Gomorrah that got whacked. It was uh, Tyre and Sidon, too. And, and, and I have detail where there are times that are the uh, groups of people are so outspoken their contempt for God that literally the thunder and the lightning from heaven. I think that's why God never even let John understand, or if he did understand, he wasn't allowed to share with us what the seven thunders are. And this, and I don't know. No man knows what they are. If any man would have known, it would have been John. So if you hear somebody giving you, hey, I know what the seven thunders are, yeah, it's uh, Seagram 7. He had too much of it. And I'm serious about that. And the last thing that, that I want to share in, in this context is that uh, this is interesting. If you look, Jeremiah fifty one thirty seven, the the title for tonight is is basically the dragon's breath. And and how about this, Jeremiah fifty one thirty seven, and Babylon shall become heat, a dwelling place for dragons, an astonishment and a hissing without an inhabitant. The the idea, ladies and gentlemen, is just simply this: the whole matrix like false reality you believe to be. Well, the economy is turning around. Look who's telling you this. The mouthpieces of hell being paid for by the Illuminists who are destroying, bringing the world to a total financial collapse. That's when Satan comes in and the man of peace and the false prophet, and they're going to give a jubilee. A jubilee is every 50 years all debts were canceled. But the price of that jubilee is going to be joining into the cashless system the mark of the beast, swearing your allegiance to Satan and denying your allegiance to Jesus. And I want to share this. Here's, here, and, and, and V and Doug and Joe, you guys chime in on this. If people won't stand up who claim to be followers of Jesus Christ, won't stand up from now under, or wouldn't stand up from when they had the chance, you tell me how someone can stand up for him when there's famine when you can't pay the rent, when you've never looked to God to provide any of your needs, and now you believe him, to, or you're calling on him to remember his mercy and provide all your needs. I believe that God is giving kind of who is on the Lord's side. Let them come to me. And when we're talking about finances, I've said this so many times. The central nervous cord that runs between at least most Christians is the one that runs not from their brain all the way down their spine into their uh, tail uh, bone, but the bottom line is their whole spinal column, but it runs from their brain to their wallet. And guess what? The, the little G of this world, the little God of this world, has so blinded mankind. Who but the arch deceiver could get people to believe that worthless paper is something other than worthless paper and that gold and silver. I had a man contact me on behalf of another man, has a million dollar portfolio. I don't know his name, so I'm not giving talking out of school. And that guy wants to sell his gold and silver and go back into paper. And so I see, I see how the scripture is very clear. It's not those who start the race, it's those who finish the race. Go ahead, Doug. Wow! No, no, you just blew me away by that comment. So you've got a, you've got somebody who wants to dump a million dollars of gold and silver uh, for uh, fiat currency. That's just wonderful. Oh, wow! Well, uh, yeah, 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 I not, just want not to me. He, he, yeah, I, I get that. Go ahead. 
Uh, I, I just want to uh, v. Uh, I, boy, I'll tell you, uh, for an economist with credentials, and folks, you can go to homelandsecurityus.com and and uh, their, uh, v's credentials are uh, his street creds are on our website. Uh, this is a man who is talking from experience. He's got the scars to prove, and stars and uh, scars and stars to prove who um, his experience, but calling everyone to repent and i think that's very important but uh v, v let me ask you this uh have we not exploited our our position as a country uh, with respect to being uh, the world's reserve currency i mean we uh our most valuable export at this point is, is the u.s dollar is it not yep and uh and as we're on the air right now talking to all the countries in the world that are listening into us right now, those on the internet, those on the radio, 50% of the largest economies in the world have already set up currency exchanges in order to trade amongst themselves without using the dollar. So the confidence, and like I said in, in the beginning of this broadcast, this is a monetary system that is built on sheer confidence. So once that confidence is shaken, and you need three things in order to maintain confidence. Number one, you need a stable government. Number two, you need a stable economy. And uh, number three, you need, the most importantly, the stable monetary policies. All three of these things we have lost total credibility in. So, yeah, we have totally compromised ourselves as a global reserve currency. People just hold on to us because of confusion and fear. Nobody in their right mind wants to hold the dollar. The Chinese don't want to hold the dollar. The Indians don't want to hold the dollar. The Middle Easterners don't want to hold the dollar. The Russians don't want to hold the dollar. Who's left holding the dollar? A bunch of idiots in Europe and a bunch of schmucks in Japan. That's it. Unbelievable. We are at a turning point right now. I, I can feel it. I know our listeners can feel it. There's a spiritual darkness, a heavy cloud, and certainly, you know, the financial aspect of things uh, um, is, is is a big part of it. Uh, v, just to clarify something here, at the, still at this point, China right now must first buy dollars to buy oil. Is that a correct statement? Not anymore. Okay. Okay, can you explain that? If China that? wants to go to Iran right now, they can, buy, they can buy oil in either gold or even yuans. Okay, all right. I, I just had, I was doing some research today, and I didn't know if that was 100 or was true or not, and I'm, I want to thank you for clearing that up. So we're, we're already past the point of no return then. Yep, I mean, look at this. If China wants to go to Australia, and the Australians want to sell them some uh, rare earth minerals, because Australia is a very mineral-rich country, they just pay for it in, in, uh, in yuans, or, or they just pay for it in Aussie dollars. They've already set up a currency exchange without using the dollar. So the Australians have dumped the dollar, so the Chinese. There you go. Okay. When did this happen? I mean, did, I, did, I'm, I must have missed the memo. Um <laughs> about when did this begin this uh unnecessary uh to buy oil or to buy dollars first to buy oil when did this start about eight to ten months ago if i remember correctly i mean don't quote me on that one but uh, that's what what i can feel off the top of my head okay all right and, and, it's, not something, but it, 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 it's been so, it, it's been in the works for a while all right all right, that clears that up. Um, and and it, it, would I be would I be correct in saying instead of holding Federal Reserve notes, I could go to my bank and say I'll take a stack of Chinese yuan and, and be safer in, in the United States, have a safer investment, or is that just a fiat currency as well, but just in a better position? At the moment, the yuan is a fiat currency. Uh, they will back it with uh, gold at some point. Uh, you know, I've told, I'm going to be honest, I've told, uh, you know, investors and, and client, my clients this. I mean, if you want to hold the yuan and if you can stomach some of the volatility that's going to be coming your way as a long-term investment, yeah, sure. But why do you want to go to the yuan? 
you know, that can give you a, maybe a, a 15, 20, 30, 40 percent on your investment. When you can get involved in gold, when you can get involved in silver right now, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you a per, a a a 500 percent return on your investment if you get involved in silver right now. If you get involved with platinum right now, same thing as well. Hey, look, folks, what's silver going for right now? Eighteen dollars and sixty-five cents. It costs them twenty-five dollars and twenty-one cents to get silver out of the ground. Twenty-five dollars and twenty-one cents per ounce. That's what how much it costs. And I've done the math. That's how much it costs for the for a mining company to get silver out of the ground. Okay. So how long would it take? For actual real supply and demand. So you see these morons, these, 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 these dastardly bastards who run the economy want to apply the laws of supply and demand to every aspect of the economy. But all of a sudden, when it comes to precious metals, oh, oh let's not apply supply and demand. Let's overlook it. Let, let, nothing to see here, folks. Keep it moving. Nothing to see here. Let's not apply supply and demand principles to precious metals. That is, do you realize that is the only sector in the economy where supply and demand is not even applied. Do you realize that is the that that is the only sector in commodities and every other thing? If coffee beans are are, are, are rare, if, I mean, for the love of God, look what happened when, a couple of months ago when the, the when the coffee industry took a hit. Starbucks raised their price like ten percent, something like that. You know, so so every other aspect in commodities, you work on a supply and demand, uh, you know, paradigm, except for gold, silver, platinum, palladium. You know, all of a sudden, when it comes to precious metal, uh, you know, market fundamentals need not apply. So this can't continue. So, yeah, right now, if you want to go ahead and buy you want, go ahead. Oh, why would I want to do that when I can buy gold and I can buy silver and exactly. get a guaranteed better rate of return and less volatility? Yeah, and, and I was just kind of using that as or trying to figure out kind of, kind of gauging uh, the yuan versus the U.S. dollar, but I guess it's in the same, pretty much in the same uh, uh, league or in the same uh, area. Uh, I was at, I, I did an interview with today with a gentleman at a uh, coin store, asked him about the supply of silver or if, if he had any silver, gold, whatever, and he said, you know, I have not, uh, uh, his his physical availability or the availability to uh, to get silver has been limited through his dealer, whoever he deals with. Are we seeing a shortage of uh, physical silver? Yeah, let me, hey, Doug, let, yeah, let me answer that if you can, because I got a dumb, I better not say that, I got an um, email saying, well, my, I went down to my local coin store, and the guy said he can get all the silver he wants, and he's only charging uh, $4 or so over spot, but uh, he doesn't have any right now, and, uh, you know, I, I think you guys are not telling the truth. First of all, let me say this. I am in the precious metals business, have been for 30 years. I deal in big numbers. I'm one of the largest dealers in the country for platinum and palladium. And I told one of my clients today, I said, I, and I won't say her name, I said, but you are really uh, two of uh, my ladies. The ladies are typically smarter than the men. They both put their money in the platinum and palladium. And by the way, right now, gold is up 1430 from its low. Uh, silver's up 24 cents. Uh, 19. It's it's a question of size. Sure, there are dealers with 50 ounces of silver or 100 ounces of silver. But when you talk to the billion dollar companies, these are there's only about a half a dozen, six actual uh, dealers, maybe eight now that are directly up with the U.S. Mint. And every day or every other day, uh, a, a story will come out that Silver Eagles are selling more in one month than the previous six months or more in one day than the previous month. But any way you cut it, the thing that most people don't understand is you have to talk about the scale. The scale means what type of purchases. When I bought in the last, uh, let's say, I'm just giving a, this is a real-world example. When I bought 400 ounces of platinum, I took two of the largest distributors in the United States and, and also in the world. I took the available platinum that was available for my clients. Now, I have to, uh, when I sell metals, I make sure that I get them. So when I go out and I say to the broker A or broker, actually, uh, uh, wholesaler A or wholesaler B, 
what's it going to cost? And they say, well, it used to cost this, but now it's going to cost that this much. I paid this much. I don't reference spot because I'm the guy that said 20 years ago the markets would diverge. And every day I get an email saying, you were right, you were right. So what I would tell people is this. It's one thing when you can find 100 or 200 ounces at your local dealer. Try and find 10,000 ounces of silver to be shipped immediately. And then see what price you have to pay. Let me tell you why I have metals and no one else does. Because I have already made the transition. I'm watching the Chinese. I can learn a lot from people who uh, you know, invented toilet paper. And I can also learn a lot from those who are st- trying to put out toilet paper and call it currency or a, a, you know, a medium of barter exchange. That's the U.S. dollar. So what I'm saying specifically is it's the position of scale. And platinum and palladium are going to be the two most important, uh, uh, not only strategic, they, are, they, they, they actually fulfill so many neat deals. They're a strategic metal. They're a monetary metal. You can get them. In, in, but, but what I'm saying is, is that, look, we're dealing with platinum now at about uh, two-thirds of its all-time high, maybe less than that even, closer to half. We're dealing with uh, palladium, which right now just is up 8 bucks on Kitco, 644. So what, what I'm telling people is this, is the issue is going to be, can you buy it at all? And based on someone who basically is in the market, and I talk to people all over the market, I, I track down people in Singapore, I track them down in London, I track them down in Dubai, and so does V. We're not giving you BS or telling you it doesn't exist. Sure, if you want to wait four to six weeks on the come, meaning maybe it'll be available, then do that. But I'm telling you, you're crazy because you cannot, you cannot, how do I say this? It is supply and demand, but that doesn't figure in to the American. Here's real simple. V, is this an exaggeration? You probably have to answer it after we come back. But America is the only nation in history that had a hard metal, uh, uh, if you will, monetary system that abandoned it for the lies of the banker and their fancy paper. Actually, China tried to do it, and the emperor that did it got uh, thrown out, and a new empire, a new emperor came in and basically reestablished the gold and silver. So, Doug, do we need to take a break? Yeah, and v, yeah, answer v, that after v, the v, hold yeah. that, yeah, hold that thought, V and uh, Steve, right. because we're up against a hard break here, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to a fantastic show with our special guest, Mr. Steve Quayle, SteveQuayle.com, and V, the Guerrilla Economist, Trench Warfare for the Financial End Times, and and folks, navigate to SteveQuayle.com. That is Steve. SteveQuail.com, and on the top right uh, hand side of, of uh, Steve's website, SteveQuail.com, the Gorilla Economist updates right there at your fingertips. And what a great service V is doing, folks. We're going to be right back after these messages. You're listening to the Hagman and Hagman Report on this, the 26th day of June 2013. I'm Doug Hagman. With me is my co host, Joe Hagman. Together, we are the Hagman and Hagman Report. We'll be right back after this. Hi folks, Doug Hagman here. You might know me as the co-host from the Hagman and Hagman Report or as a frequent guest on Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. If you're like me, you're tired and confused over today's headlines, you just don't know where to turn for accurate, concise information about really what's going on, what's truly going on in today's society. If you don't know where to turn for accurate, well-researched, and properly vetted news, I've got a suggestion. In fact, it's a requirement. Bookmark Canada Free Press. That's CanadaFreePress.com on the Internet. It's just not for Canada. It's for news across the world. Judy McLeod, founding editor, has put together a vast array of talented writers like Kelly O'Connell, Daniel Greenfield, Dr. Eileen johnson Powell, a lot of guest columnists, very talented writers. Folks, that's Canada Free Press at CanadaFreePress.com. Now mobile-friendly. Follow on Facebook, because without America, there is no free world. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to just talk about our sponsors, our wonderful sponsors, AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com. Everyone listening to this broadcast tonight, please bookmark 
go to American Survival wholesale.com you know they heard our call to provide bibles to those in need they've partnered with other sponsors and anonymous listeners to provide bibles to those who need them and can't afford them you know their goal is to send out a thousand full-size king james version of the bibles and they are in the process of doing just that Folks, we were talking about this one time. They stepped up to the plate, and they said, you know, the word has to get out. We're living in the really the end times. They, along with other sponsors and anonymous listeners, have a plan, again, to send out a 1,000 full-size King James Bibles to our studios, listeners, those who need them. Here is how you can help, ladies and gentlemen. Go to American Survival Wholesale.com. That's American Survival Wholesale.com. Folks, order any GMO-free Thrive product. That's, that's the, that's the uh, long-term storage food. And they will send not one, but two Bibles to those who need them. Now, we've been collecting names and addresses of those who've been asking to read the Word of God. And f- folks, they're going to send out those Bibles to those in need free of charge. They're paying the shipping and costs as well. This is one of those times in your life, ladies and gentlemen, that you, our listeners, can give the greatest gift of all the Word of God to, I'll tell you what, uh, all you have to do is just order uh, any product at AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com, over $20, and add to your survival preps with a great product, and they will, in fact, send out a Bible, two Bibles, to those in need. Go there now, AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com. You can email them, too, at BugOutAmerica at USA.com. And one more thing, ladies and gentlemen, they're also assisting us in growing our show. We're attempting to grow the Hagman and the Hagman Report, reach more listeners. Because of that, they've agreed, and listen to this, folks, to donate 25% of any purchase of camping items in their camping collection towards the mission of growing the listener base throughout the world. They want nothing more than to donate a lot. I mean, they're talking like $25,000, $50,000 to this mission. Here's how you, the listener, can help. Go to their website, AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com. Select any of the items from their camping collection. But they've got this one deal. I just, I love it. It's a great deal. For $149, you get an Alpine tent, an adult sleeping bag, a portable cook stove with nine pouches of fuel, a stainless steel six-in-one camping tool. And to top it off, they are throwing in an 18-inch camouflage backpack with a water bottle, all for $149. Now, this package retails for a good $300 at least, I, I, maybe $315. This is just one example of how you can help us grow. That's AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com. Folks, don't put it off. Time is short. If you have any questions, you can always email them at BugOutAmerica at USA.com. In his secret laboratory, Tim Kirby was able to build the world's most sophisticated robot, which unfortunately doesn't give a darn about anything. Tim's mission? To teach his creation why it should care about humans and world events. This is Why You Should Care. Watch only on RT.com. Amazing. I never thought I'd see the day. The day you have the bravery to come out of the closet? Bro, it's okay to be gay. But don't come in my room and don't touch anything I own. No, I'm talking about the day when the BRICS countries would get together to create their own credit rating agencies and maybe even create a massive international banking system of their own. Ratings? I give them an I rating, as in inferior to America, baby. You know, in kind of a messed up, stupid robot way, you kind of have a point. The BRICS countries saw during the 2008 financial crisis that the credit ratings of the big three agencies were totally wrong and seemingly very biased in favor of the USA and EU. S&P, Moody's, and Fitch Group, all of which are based in the EU and USA, control 95% of the market share. Due to a lack of competition, if they say your country has an amazing credit rating, then it shall have it. Until the next financial bailout, that is. The BRICS nations may also put together $50 billion to start a BRICS development bank. 
Wow, don't you see how this is extremely exciting? This could be like a worldwide financial paradigm shift in terms of credit ratings and banking. This is amazing. This is big. Bro, why are you so worried about all these banks and credit ratings and stuff? Dude, we can't even afford socks at Walmart. Well, that's because... Be... Ye... Yeah, you're right. I'm flat broke. You're flat broke. Let's go get drunk and uh, do some shoplifting. Walmart, here I come. Remember, kids, competition is at the heart of capitalism. A more diverse financial world could possibly benefit us all. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to hour number two of this Wednesday edition of the Hagman and Hagman Report with our very special guest, Steve Quayle, and the guerrilla economist, V, as we had a great first hour talking about what is happening in the economy. Uh, prices of metals have been dropping. The stock market has been dropping. All things seem to be uh, very unstable at the moment. People are unsure of what is going to happen. People are even uh, asking lots of questions. I see when the most the biggest question is when is this all going to come down and obviously we don't know the You're answer to it. that but we are seeing it in slow motion um with that i'll give it back to steve as uh v dropped off i'm gonna have to bring him back on and uh he's back on now so take it away gentlemen well v i've asked you a question and i and i, I want to give you the chance to you know, take it from where I left it, because it's critical that people understand. You know, Jesus said that where a, a man's treasure is, there would his heart be also. I really believe that the whole fiat money system was to divorce people from the reality of the living God and his just measures. That's why I love uh, Bobby Brown's uh, just measures, because Bobby gets it. But the point is, is that we are... We, we, even, even Christians, I see it. I know V, you counsel pastors and you counsel others, but they don't get the fact that when they put their heart and treasure into the paper fiat system and then they lose it all somehow, oh well, the uh, Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. That's contrary to the parable of the talents. So would you go ahead and just, you know, answer the question I'd asked before the show, I mean, before the break? Yeah, um, the, the thing is that, you know, it's a, it's a true saying when the Bible says my people die for a lack of knowledge. And, uh, and, and, and Steve, your question, could you repeat that question? Because uh, on my phone line, I was cutting in and out. Well, uh, the, thing, the thing that I wanted you to basically address is the fact that the printing of paper Right. was grand theft and the divorcing of the paper markets, the, the, I guess I, I would almost say this, the ultimate honeypot or the ultimate seduction away from reality has been the paper market. By the way, the BRIC nations, when they first started to form, they had, they had uh, decided a couple years ago that they were going to get away from the U.S. dollar. And it's interesting, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, the contempt that's out there is only increasing. So I guess what I was asking is the disconnect, you know, between the the idea that paper is real and real commodities are not real. I know that almost sounds like a dull, an oxymoron, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what they've done is this, okay? They basically created a system, number one, and uh, they created a propaganda uh, uh, media manipulation uh, as well. And they, through psychological conditioning and incrementalism, they made you believe that the paper that they print is actually worth something. They make you believe that it actually has value. So thus, I can walk down the street in New York City have an ounce of gold or a ounce of silver, and I could ask the average idiot on the street, hey, uh, how much do you think this, this coin is? And literally, if I took out a silver coin, people would think that it's 50 cents. People will think it's worth a dollar. That is the mental disconnect that people have. 
And this is done through mass conditioning, okay? Because the elites know, look, the gold and silver, real assets are finite resources, okay? You have to control finite resources in order to put yourself into a position of power and authority and to be able to leverage that power and authority. You have to control real assets. Now, once you've controlled real assets, you can issue uh, these, these, these intangibles, these, these fake um, uh, uh, legal tender, so to speak, all right? and that's your dollars. And they make you believe that these dollars have power. They make you believe that you, you're somebody because, oh, look at so-and-so. He's a multi-millionaire. He's a nothing. He's a nobody. You know? And so they make you have an idea where you spend your life, your energy, your time, your savings, your passions. Your, you waste yourself and you work yourself to the bone so you can acquire more paper. Meanwhile, the real elites are buying hard assets. That's the difference, Okay. The paper world was designed for us to play around in. We're like a bunch of kids playing in a sandbox. And we think that whatever sand castle we build or whatever st the structure we concoct has some sort of validity to it. We fail to realize that there's a whole big world out there. And the real big world where the big boys play is a completely different ball game. Okay? We're very infantile in our thinking. Okay? And they're, because they're able to control the ebb and flow of information, because they're able to have mass conditioning of people's minds, they're able to create a false reality making you think that paper, that there's hope in paper. There really isn't, okay? Folks, fiat currency is not a new thing, okay? It's been tried many times. The central banking concept goes back to the ancient Sumerian culture, okay, believe it or not. And it has failed every single time. It has been implemented, and it usually fails within a hundred years or so. When it's running pure fiat, where it's totally backed up by nothing, it re it usually comes apart in about forty to fifty years. And guess what? We're at the perfect juncture for both systems to collapse: central banking and fiat currency. Steve, uh, wow. Doug, okay. Yep. Th that, that's a mouthful. I here, mean, here, here's, here's, hey, Doug, let me yep. set something straight because I know that this is hard. It, here's the thing. Everybody who has lived in the world, let's just call it that was, is bound by not only normalcy bias, but I would call uh, uh, the, the, the expectation of normalcy, okay? In other words, hey, today is another day. Hey, it didn't happen. It doesn't. That's why you get the, anybody who asks the question, when's it going to happen, is missing the point. It's happening. I will not answer that question anymore. And, and I'm going to ask everybody. I'm going I'm to give everybody a test. It's real simple. One question, one quiz. What would you do different than you've already done if you knew you only had 24 hours? In 24 hours, your credit cards won't work. In 24 hours, anything you have in the bank is gone. In 24 hours, there's a mass panic at the stores. In 24 hours, there's no gallons of gasoline to be purchased anymore in the open market because they're shut down. In 24 hours, there's a cure for you. You can't leave your house. In 24 hours or less, you know, if you're on the red list, and that's a gun owner, primarily anybody who's outspoken, radio talk show host, anybody who's been telling the truth. See, when you have in Invented or fabricated a world based on lies, telling the truth is a dangerous thing to the liars that be. So for those of you who still send me or V, and I think we've been asked that question, Doug, you, you say you refer to it or infer that it's in the thing, when, when, when. Anybody who asks that question, I'm going to say this, I'm sorry to be offensive, I don't mean to be, I'm not trying to be unkind, but you're deaf and you're blind. Because what you're looking for is an event, and you're not seeing everything that's taking place. Now, get mad at me, and I hope that makes you run right down to the supermarket. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we're seeing the failure of the distribution of just-in-time inventory. We're hearing the broadcast. And, by the way, Las Vegas likes to live like they uh, and talk about uh, what goes on there stays there. i got news for you. That's not true. It ascends before the eyes of a holy God. And I'm no teetotaler, I'm no prude, and I know how to, 
in my past, before I was saved, I knew how to uh, shame the most uh, profane pagan because of my antics. So the point is, is that what I'm saying, 120 degrees, I'd again refer you to a certain prophecy I gave a number of years ago. When the Lord said the West Coast burns in its lust, while the East Coast is cold and indifferent, he's going to deal with them both according to their hearts. And I want to share this when it comes to God's judgment. God's judgment, and I've said this so many years, I sound like a broken record, and like Hawk says, Lord, why do you want me to keep saying the same thing over and over and over again, Lord? Haven't they got it yet? And he said, no. Until they get it, I won't have you, you know, you're going to say it. But as to their specific sins, so will their specific judgment be. You know, I thought about this. What's the old statement? Do not ask from who, for whom the bell tolls, the, the bells toll for thee. In other words, ultimately, everybody's going to have their day when they exit the now and go into eternity. And I thought about that. Those bells at Satan's sanctuary celebrating the total abandonment of the King of Glory, the Creator of the universes, uh, uh, for this person shall a man, you know, a man and woman, okay, the family. Do you understand what happened today, ladies and gentlemen, was a complete assault against heaven, against God's established family? You know, why did Jesus teach us to pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Because God is the ultimate Father. And the ultimate slap in his face, and I, and I know that the Lord isn't going to just give me boxing gloves and step me into the ring, and actually I prefer lightning at my command, but that isn't happening. So the point is, is that it's in his court, and it's in his judgment, and it is in his time. And so when you ask me, when is it happening? If anybody asks you the question, say, I refuse to answer that question until you open your eyes, open your ears, and open your heart, because it's happening before your eyes. And here's, as I was praying, when Dee's speaking, I'm sitting here uh, praying, Lord, what would you say to this people tonight? Here's what he gave me, and thank you, intercessors. Jeremiah 8, 7 through 23, very famous scripture. At what instant shall I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it? If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. But we're not repenting or returning. We're just embracing more of it. And what instance shall I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it? If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my vice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. Now, go therefore to the, speak to the men of Judah. Speak to the Congress. Speak to the Senate. And to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, or to the United States, Washington, D.C., New York, whatever, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you, and devise a device against you. Return ye now every one from his evil way. In other words, repent, and make your ways and your doings good. That applies to me tonight. And they said, there is no hope. But we will act and walk after our own devices, and we will every one do the imagination of his evil heart. In other words, they're saying, yep, we know we could return, but hey, Evil's more fun. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, ask ye now among the heathen, who hath heard such thing? The virgin of Israel hath done a very horrible thing. Will a man leave the snow of Lebanon, which cometh from the rock of the field, or shall the cold flowing waters that come from another place be forsaken? But listen to this. Here it is, because my people have forgotten me. They have burned incense to vanity, and they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient past, to walk in paths in a way not cast up, to make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing. Everyone that passes thereby shall be astonished and wag his head. I will scatter them with an east wind before the enemy. I will show them the back and not the face and the day of their calamity. So, ladies and gentlemen, there's the word of the Lord. Now, some of you will say, well, Second Chronicles 7.14 says this, and, and we're in a female or a ladies' Bible study or a men's group, and we're reading about, uh, you know, that we're to pray for government. I got news for you. There comes a time when praying for your government, you know, you can continue to pray, and you can do what you feel is right in the Lord, but you don't understand there comes a point when the Lord himself says, and I will not hear their prayers on their behalf. So we're at that point, Doug. So I want to make this clear to you, too, and everyone listening. The paradigm that we all are in is the box of their making. The Lord Jesus Christ, through the undertaking of his sacrifice on Calvary, 
on, on forgive me, Calvary, was basically given so that we might be able to get out of the box, that the devil is nothing more than a shooting box or the killing field. And God wants us in the, the land of the living. So when you're talking about money, you touch a central nervous cord because, uh, or a central nerve because you're, you're talking about the thing that still enables a person to eat, to do whatever they're going to do, but that day when it all changes. So if I could tell you, or V could tell you, or Doug, you got a call from some of the people you know, and they said you got 24 hours, what would you do different, ladies and gentlemen? I would suggest that that day will come, that day fast approaches, and everything you think you can do at the last minute, you need to do before that time comes, especially when it comes to getting right first and foremost with God repenting, hey, it's as easy as God forgive me, and then saying, and Lord, give me the power by your spirit to live differently. That's what I pray, and I'll that's you, what you I, need you know, to pray. I, I think V opened the program so eloquently by, by saying, you know, we, we all need to repent and pray, and, as, and, 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 and Steve, with you uh, saying that we need to be bold as Christians. We need to be men, you know, so you're right. Oh, brother, Doug, you just sent me an email, and V, I want you to answer this because I'm afraid I've got to bite my tongue really hard, and, and you're eloquent, and right now I'm a little gnarly, so can you please ask Stephen V to clarify, I'm not picking on you, Ted, what they think will happen to the world power structure after the U.S. dollar collapses? Uh, you know, uh, and he's saying, however, I'm hearing from others that the power will be shared by China, Russia, and other countries as a 10 region world government will be set up, Club of Rome, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, you know, what do you think will happen to the world power structure after the U.S. dollar collapses? It's obvious, and I think I know the answer, but I'll let you speak to that. You know, the, uh, the thing is, this, you know, what I, the thing with America is this, you know, we are, we're done, you know. We're done. Uh, we're we're you know we are going to be uh, uh, subjugated and integrated into a new global uh, type of ec- uh, of, of uh, economic setup. Um, you know, I believe firmly. I think the uh, the BRICS will kind of be running in their own system, and their system will interface with the new system of Western banking that's going to be existing upon the earth. Uh, I don't think it will be a full-blown integration because, uh, let's be honest, there is a prophecy in the Bible that says that the kings of the East shall rise up against the Antichrist. So I know the Russians, the Chinese, and the Indians all are basically nations that have been always suspicious, number one, of the uh, of the West. Uh, and number two uh, are nations that are very nationalistic. You know, they, they, they take their culture very seriously. Okay, they have a lot of pride. So, I, you know, in terms of the, the power structure, you know, I don't know how that's going to play out. Steve would probably know uh, better the, uh, the, the, the policy and, and, and what that's going to, you know, be like. How can we answer the financial aspect of it? And the financial aspect of it is that we're done. You know, we're going to be integrated with Europe, and there's, there's going to be a new uh, 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 monetary Western system, uh, and that, that's going to be uh, digital-based uh, and probably gold-backed. And... Uh, you know, we will be one of many uh, currencies on this basket of currencies called the SDR, Special Drawing Rights. Um, it will be by Bancor. Uh, that's the uh, the name of, of the new system they're, they're putting out there. That could change. Uh, just like they wanted to do the whole Amero thing, and uh, they decided to, you know, crash that. And uh, basically, we're going to have the dollar still. It's not going to be called the Amero. It's going to be called the dollar. Uh, the Canadians will still have their loonie, and the, the Mexicans will still have their peso. And uh, what's going to happen is that it will be valued differently. It's going to be valued. So on the surface, you folks are going to be thinking you still have it, but you're not going to. The, most of the paper currencies are going to be done. Uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, you first start out with the, with the smart card technology because the infrastructure is there. I've worked on some of that stuff. It's called NFC, Near Field Communication. Uh, I've seen the uh, network setups um, firsthand. So the, the infrastructure is there. And uh, and from the infrastructure, you know, all we need to do is for Visa, MasterCard, American Express, uh, Discover, uh, and all the other international uh, credit cards that are abroad to begin to start issuing smart cards. And then the uh, incrementalism will go from smart card to smart chip. 
And the next thing you know, your kid's asking you for a the new augmentation for the smart chip so they can interface with their new Xbox. And this is how it begins, folks. This is how it begins. But uh, that's the monetary end of it. So the point is, look, here's the thing. Stop. Look, if you're in America, and you're an American, you're asking me, oh, how, how's it going to look? Look, you're screwed. That's how it's going to look. All right? You're screwed. And uh, if you don't have precious metals, if you don't have a means to feed yourself, if you don't have a means to to protect yourself, it's not going to work out well for you. So, you know, if, if you basically you're describing to me, hey, V, what's the car wreck going to look like when the car goes off the cliff? Plus, it doesn't matter what the wreck looks like. It's a wreck. It's a wreck. I'm describing to you the, 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 the engine block gets pushed through the firewall and, and the people are slaughtered on the inside, or do you want me to tell you that the transmission comes flying off and goes 60 yards? It doesn't matter. So what most people are, are, are concerned with, and look, you've got to be concerned about what's going on in the United States because you live here, okay? Don't worry about the world power structure. Worry about the fact that you don't have enough gold and silver. Worry about the fact that you, you might not have enough food. Worry about the fact that all your finances might not be in order. Worry about the fact that you spiritually might be in disarray. Worry about those things. If you worry about those things, those are things you can control. You can't control the world economy. You can't control what's the world power structure going to look like. Don't even worry about it. That's like describing what a train wreck looks like. The point is the train is wrecked. Steve. Uh, yeah, that was a great analogy, V, by the way. I just want to mention this. The uh, uh, the person that sent that question is a uh, is a resident of China, uh, lives in Hong oh, Kong. Perfect. So, you, you know. Well, you're uh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but his question, Doc, his, his question is, is here's what I think people need to understand. And because he lives in China, the Chinese have queued 10,000 people in line to buy the gold. We, we put yep. that story up, I think, last week, and it was, a, it was one, you know, a picture was worth a thousand words. We're not talking just to Americans tonight. We are talking to everybody around the world. Like, for instance, I just got a, a lady from Australia said, I think she said, ask me, Carolyn, and I already responded. You know, she said, should we in Australia start be, and people don't understand this, Australia and New Zealand have already cut trade agreements with the Chinese and are going to make the yuan convertible with their currencies. But please ask me if it is worthwhile for an Australian to buy yuan. Well, let me share something that's going on in Australia. I put it up. The Perth Mint still, the Perth Mint is one of the biggest mints in the world. I used to know the head of it a number of years ago. Uh, the point being is, is that we're, we're, they're not able to deliver orders from April 26. Now, April, let me count them. Isn't that like April, May, uh, June? That's about mm -hmm. close to 90 days. may have been March. Yep. But anyway, you know, they can't deliver. What I'm trying to share with everybody is simply this. This is a worldwide broadcast. Where a night out on the town in, let's say, Reno or Las Vegas used to cost, let's say, a thousand bucks. In Moscow, it's up to a hundred thousand bucks. I have a Russian who listen to the show and they speak English, and they're, some of them are Christian, some of them are not. But the point is, Moscow has now become the most expensive city in the world. Absolutely. And for those of you who have ever traveled to Paris or ever traveled to any of the uh, Switzerland, I think, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, somebody who's in Switzerland, isn't a cup of coffee about 8 bucks U.S. now in Switzerland? And uh, Coca-Cola, I mean, you know, it's going to cost you $50 for a lunch. The thing that most, and that's in U.S. terms, but what most people can't understand is the difference between value, purchasing power, and official exchange rates. That's where it breaks down. Someone, and I've heard this so many times, obviously, I used to, I, I wrote a book a number of years ago. I forgot about this book. I wrote a book called Investment Perspectives on Precious Metals. And uh, it was back in the, oh, I think, uh, early 80s. And in that, I detailed the entire history of gold, the entire history of silver, platinum and palladium, and I went into great detail for the layman. And at the time, it, it was a pretty cool book. It had like four color pictures of all the coins that were available then, and I discussed it. But what I think is really critical is that Americans have been so devoid of their history of the metals. That's why they got to rewrite history. And that's why so many people are failing to understand that we're not following some new paradigm. 
we're not uh, following a new transform into a new age. We're going into techno feudalism, my word. We're going into tech decadence, my word, technological decadence. We're going into the period where, except the Lord Jesus Himself, shorten the days there be no flesh left alive. One of the calls I got today was from somebody or an email, and I forget which because inundated with both, is that somebody wanted to know if uh, I thought that the end of mankind was close with uh, the whole if you will, singularity, which Kurzweil, Ray Kurzweil, and others are writing about, talking about. The reason I post those stories on my website, and Tom Horn has probably got the most intensive website for that stuff that exists, in my opinion, the best website of its kind in all Christendom is Tom Horn's Raiders News Update. And I don't say that to flatter Tom, but look, Tom has been on the cutting edge of this stuff too. What we're telling you, everyone, hello, wake up. They are going to force the whole world. This is a whole world wondered after the beast. And for those of you that still think silver and gold and uh, precious stones don't uh, count for anything, years ago, Doug, I don't know if I told you this, V, and Joe, I don't know if I've ever said this, maybe, I used to deal in high-quality diamonds. I'm not a jeweler. I'm not a gemologist. I'm just a guy who understood a GIA certificate. And in those days, you could buy a, a single-carat D, internally flawless, Stone, D best color. One carat was about eleven thousand bucks. You'd be hard pressed to find any of those with perfect cut, perfect clarity, uh, no fluorescence. You know, uh, just basically a perfect diamond. You're going to pay about twenty five grand. Now the high dollar guys, those are not even necessarily millionaires. You can carry a hundred million dollars in a little pouch in your pocket. You can't do that with even even gold and silver, but you can do it with. And I'm only talking. And I'm not selling diamonds. I'm just saying. But that's where the big money is going. You get into a three-carat D flawless, and when you go on eBay, if they ever show up, they're up into the three hundred thousand dollars. One carat, twenty-five thousand. You go three times that, and you're up in the three hundred thousand. I'm not saying that's wholesale. I'm just saying that's what they're selling them at. So, ladies and gentlemen, the rich guys, and this is what V referred to earlier, are putting their money into stuff because ultimately, I'll make it as simple as I know, if you want to get stuff, you have to have stuff that's worth something to the person that's willing to give up their stuff for your stuff. It doesn't get any easier. But no place in history will people give up important stuff for paper. You could have a million-dollar bearer bond, and a guy can have an ounce of silver. The guy with an ounce of silver will eat before a guy with a million-dollar bearer bond when it all starts to melt down. And that's no exaggeration. If you were to mark to market, in other words, what the real value is, instead of the hypothecated BS factor, you would see the world uh, economies, world economies, with the exception of China and Russia, they both have, you know, 12,000 tons minimum of gold, 12,000 minimum. China's up in the stratosphere, and they, they'd fare well, because then they can come in with gold or silver and buy up everything and anything, and they're already doing it. I put up an article today. A couple of years ago, there was $121 million or $31 million of Chinese investment. Now it's, what, 2.3 or 3.2 billion? And, you see, what, again, is, is that we're talking about getting it. And it's my prayer, Doug, every time we go on this show, that people start to really hear. But please don't ask that question when, because it's now. The when is now. A good example, uh, natural news, is tech expert urges Americans to quit Google Facebook over NSA surveillance revelations. Hello? I started screaming. And, by the way, I will say this. I have brethren that are doing good works for the Lord. But by, by being on Google and, and Facebook and Twitter and Tweeter and Chip and Dale and whatever else there is out there, and I don't, I'm not on any social network, linked in, linked out, or freaked in, freaked out, the bottom line is, is that you're, you're inviting, you're inviting algorithms to come into your life, mathematical formulas that will know more than you in the metadata or the metadata realm than you could ever imagine. And B, you work in that world. If people really understood to the degree they're scrutinized every penny, every dime, every dollar, and if you buy stuff at Costco or Walmart and you're using any type of uh, customer code or, or a CVS pharmacy card or whatever, those cards all have number and meaning, and you are being profiled. And if that isn't enough, now it's not enough to have your DNA. 
pretty soon they're going to want your electron spin ratio of your unique identifying atomic substructure. And I'm not kidding. Go ahead, V. Yeah, that's absolutely true. All these things uh, put together, uh, you basically are creating a digital dossier. Uh, the new system that will come into place will be totally technologically tyrannical. And uh, what that simply means is that this digital dossier, will they'll, they'll take into account your buying habits, what you're buying, uh, in the drugstore, the supermarkets, to, you know, what social sites you venture into, what are your political leanings, your breakdown of your political leanings, your religious leanings, how religious you are, how committed you are, how loyal you are, uh, what you read, what you see. Uh, I mean, think about it. You have cable boxes now that are going to be watching you. Your game system is going to be watching you. Your smartphone is being tapped. I mean, all these things coming into play. Basically, you know, you, you have uh, Hitler's dream come true where you have a, a perfect dossier on an individual, and that dossier, you might say, well, what they, you know, why would they care that they have this, uh, this dossier on me? Why, 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 why should I care? Well, here's the thing, moron. With a dossier, they can predict what your behavior would be, number one. Number two, that's going to be your new credit score, okay, based upon it's going to be weighted against this digital dossier. That's going to dictate and predicate what type of job you're going to get what type of loan you're going to get from the bank, uh, you know, are you a trustworthy uh, borrower, uh, you know, all these things come into place. Will I be able to get a business license to open up my own coffee shop, uh, my Agenda 21 qualified coffee shop? You know, these are the things that come into play that people don't, don't realize. And, you know, and before all these things come into play, there's, you know, one thing that I want to touch upon, which was... Uh, Major financial news was uh, the the German uh, finance minister Marco Schwabel and uh, the Bundesbank over there. You know when they had that huge uh, EU deliberation uh, between the Germans and the French, two of the biggest economies in the EU, and they deliberated uh, for 18 hours. 27 bankers deliberating and debating for 27 hours. And uh, like I said, you know, I said they're going to put the pressure on Germany. And I said, you know, in a couple of broadcasts, uh, you know, in the past, I said, watch Germany. Watch the pressure build in Germany and what the, what the EU is going to do to Germany. Well, what, what happened? Well, now they are mandating an 8% mandatory levy on all German savings accounts. So, basically, so basically a Cyprus-style bail-in is being built into their system. Now, folks, this is not news. Anybody that's been following me for a while will understand. I mentioned the word rehypothecation or, or reverse hypothecation. You know, I'm one of probably the few people on the air anywhere that will actually talk about it, okay? Uh, standard hypothecation is simply because, uh, I'll explain it to you, it's, you know, you buy a mortgage, right? You have a house. As long as you're paying that note, that house is yours. The moment you stop, your, your house becomes the collateral for the creditor, okay? Well, in rehypothecation, your asset becomes the collateral for the banker, all right? Your checking accounts, your savings accounts, your uh, retirement accounts, all these things become collateral for the bankers. Now, you might say to yourself, how does this apply to me? Well, simple. If you study, uh, the IMF actually did a, a phenomenal report on this, if anybody wants to you know, spend the time and read it. The IMF report on the Lehman Brothers collapse okay, actually details uh, how rehypothecation brought it all down. And same thing with MF Global. Okay? Rehypothecation started in the U.K. In the U.K., you know, when they started it up, the U.K. banks, uh, you know, the, we were able to go on ahead and and hypothecate, rehypothecate to infinity. Now, when they started doing that in the U.S., we capped it at 140%. Meaning, if I was a bankster and I could, rate it, I could use your fund as collateral to go ahead and play in the market without even you knowing, and then I will pledge your retirement accounts, your savings accounts, anything, any investment equity account that you've put into my firm, I can pledge that as collateral without even your permission and without even you knowing up to 140%. So it's not enough that I take all of it, but I'm going to, get, I'm going to take all of it plus 40% more. This is 
huge news, folks. So the question is, if the economy is recovering, why are we still in crisis mode? Why are we still passing laws for bail-ins? Why are we still passing laws for things such as rehypothecation? Okay? These things are real. And you think this is normal. That's why I said this is, this is different. This is not how it was 20 years ago. You didn't have a derivative debt. Now, watch the, you know, I told you about the bond sell-offs in one of, my, in the, in one of the alerts I put up at Steve's website. Those bond sell-offs, watch how it affects the derivatives market, especially inter- interest rate swaps. Watch that closely. Everything is building up to a pressure. Everything is starting to shake. This is massive, massive news. There is nothing but chaos and disarray wherever in the world you look, except for one place, and that's gold and silver. If you're able to just just ignore that spot price, that's the only place I know where you can find peace of safety. Okay, look at those pictures of those of, of those people in China, ten thousand deep, waiting online to buy gold. We have morons. 10,000 deep that we don't want to buy a stupid iPhone. I mean, this is, this, is the, this, is the, this is the craziness of this whole thing. You know, this is the craziness of it. Folks, we deserve, if we don't snap out of it, we deserve what's coming to us because we asked for it. We begged for it. We, it's unbelievable. I want to say something about the iPhones. Uh, I don't know if you guys are paying attention to this, but I believe that when you're when you're uh, talking on iPhones and specific uh, networks, I believe you're constantly been being bombarded with infrasonics in addition to just the voice that's carrying. I don't know if you know this, but wasn't it AT and T and I forget the other network that's going to have messages from the president that you will uh, not be able to turn off or ignore. Now, if you don't believe you're being brainwashed. And, and, you know, I, get, I keep hearing, you guys shouldn't call people jackals and hyenas. What makes you think we're talking just to ordinary people and not the spirits in those people? I, I know I get criticized for sometimes uh, spending too much airtime on my critics. Those of you that are spiritual enough will understand, and I mean this, or who are mature enough, what makes you think that sometimes I don't know the specific spirits that are speaking through idiotic emails. And I'm not saying, and I'm not disparaging, I'm just telling you that so you understand why I do it. Start praying and looking beyond the obvious. But the point that we're talking about is, has it dawned on you if you are already programmed through uh, subliminal programming? Remember, Marshall McLuhan said, the medium is the message. In other words, everybody used to look at television programming or, or radio broadcasting, and they claimed it carried a message. No, it was the technology itself that was a message. So I'm telling you, at some point, if you're all pre-programmed, and if you're an Obamaton, okay, what that is is, a, is obviously someone that is so already controlled they cannot see uh, uh, the truth because they're just pre-programmed with a lie. What makes you think that you can't be electronically zombified? And if that doesn't scare the hell out of you, I can't do any better than that. In other words, you are just like the Charles Bronson uh, people in uh, telephone, or telethon, I guess it was, where you get a code word and the Manchurian candidate would come forth. Have any of you ever given that thought? And now, hey, why I bring that up too, Doug and, and Joe and V, someone said there was a minute where we got some really strange music on the playing on the background i guess we flickered on and flickered off but during that time i you know i can't explain it but i can tell you this the harmonics of dna and v and and you and doug and i were on a conference call with a certain individual who kind of went into that a little bit because i went there in the conversation what makes you think that they don't already have your specific harmonic DNA. What makes you think that they haven't spent a trillion dollars to read your brain waves from outer space? This is not this is not Buck Rogers on LSD taking a trip on peyote. This is technology that already exists. So I just submit to you, they may have and probably do have 
in their algorithms, even specific people's DNA. That's why we're to put on the helmet of salvation. That's why when we read Ephesians 6, that's why we cover our minds with the blood of Jesus. That's why they need to be renewed. I, I absolutely am convinced that the mind of modern man cannot even grasp what I just said. But it will, it will be graspable. Some of you will get it. I know this. Some of you will get it. And if you get it, Blessed are you, because flesh and blood and my mouth and V's mouth did not reveal it unto you, but your Father which is in heaven. I don't even travel with my iPhone much anymore. I got an iPhone 4. Uh, basically, I'm about asking the Lord just to break me free of it. Now, I understand. I'll check in with, you know, through different internets and stuff uh, with my, my uh, laptop, and I got a little dinky one, so I can check my messages or you can call my store. But I'm telling you this. When I wrote Genetic Arm again, Doug, I'm setting the record straight. No one would embrace it. No one could uh, in, in, uh, even take uh, the, the thought that human and animal DNA would be there. Now, with the uh, ruling today by the Supreme Court, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you may not know this, you may not like this, but the U.S. military already passed a law where we used to be a, uh, I don't know what section it was when you were court-martialed, you get caught having sex with an animal, no big deal anymore. You get caught doing anything anymore, as long as it's a profane, no big deal. You get caught testifying in Jesus, you're out and facing prison. Oh, that the people of God would wake up. My heart is so burdened. And today in Bozeman, Montana, was an interesting thing. I looked out at the sun, and I'm looking as the sun sets right now in the west. I, I said to somebody, and I forget who, maybe I said it to uh, my friend Daryl, I said, did you notice that today, even though the sun's out, there's a whole different feeling in the atmosphere. And uh, the only way I could describe it was a suffocating stillness. And by the way, the wind was blowing, so I'm not talking about a wind situation. I'm just talking about a suffocating stillness. And ladies and gentlemen, those of us who are alive at this time, have the ability to say a literally thing that David said, you know, or forgive me, the prophet Ezekiel said, when he said, come from the four winds, O Spirit of God, and breathe upon these bones that they might live. You may be dry, you may be thirsty, you may, and what we're trying to do is give you life. We're trying to tell you what to do, and we're trying to help you. So when V comes into the public sector and tells you this stuff, he's telling you this stuff for a reason. And, and I, I want to read a, a real quick email, and, and uh, Hawk suggested this, V, and I, I think I sent it to you, but he said, Steve, now have V tell those who do hear and see what they need to do and address this with respect to the July 3rd date. And he's asking that V is discussing with the potential for martial law waiting the wings, especially to those, you know, who, who are hearing it. Well, and, and even modest means. Let me tell you something. If you have modest means, buy food. You only buy metals when you're absolutely in a position where you've got food. I, I laugh, I mock, I, I scorn, I ridicule, I shake my head. The average person does not get what stress does to your body and the need for calories and not empty calories. That's why food first, food first, food first, food first, food first, food first, food first. I said that for the last uh, 20 years on talk radio and people said, he only sells fear to sell his food. No, I'm saying buy food. Buy it from the supermarket. Get it for where you can get it. Because the day will come when if you go under martial law and when you go under martial law and curfews, and guess what? What happens if they come out with the ration coupons for this, that, or the other thing? By all means, ladies and gentlemen, supplement your food with vitamins, real vitamins, vitamin D, vitamin C. The last two things you want to deal with is scurvy or uh, you know anything like rickets. You don't want to deal with that. The average person in their bug-out bag wouldn't even consider putting in, and I'm saying the average, but I believe you're above average. So there are things that you can learn, things you can apply. But tonight, you've got to understand this and understand this well. The markets in the metal, when something goes into difficulty, do you realize who owns the biggest gold mines? By the way, I don't think I told you this. Uh, Sunday, I spent three hours in the air photographing some of the biggest mines in the world, and one of the, uh, actually three of the most famous gold mines in Montana, which are owned by American Barrick or uh, owned by Dennis Washington, I mean, and, and the Butte mine, which is when I start putting those pictures up, you'll get an idea for how much gold is in the big sky state and the treasure state. Montana is called the treasure state. But what I want you to understand, it is not beyond 
the realm of conceivability for the big guys to say, we're going to shut down. They will shut down in an upheaval. And as they shut down and the market supply dries up and nobody can stay in business when it costs you more to produce, this is an orchestrated event to dry up the availability of the market, to force weak hands, to force people to give up the weak hands, uh, those who are weak in hands to give up their holdings, and then to basically dry up the supply. I don't care if Uncle... Billy's goat, you know, found 10 ounces of silver, or some nanny goat says that, well, you can't, I can get it at my supply, I bought 10 ounces. Yeah, well, I'm not in that realm. I'm not trying to be snooty, but the people that are coming to me are saying, I need 10,000 silver rounds, and I need it tomorrow, and I don't care what it costs, because when I see smart money, big money moving in, i got to commend the people. And by the way, again, my my compliments to the ladies with the determination and the, the intuition and the ability to stand with their uh, decisions, because they're smart. The men, i, I, I got to tell you something. God grant them stainless steel in their spine, not just when it comes to making financial decisions, but not to wimp out and, and, and absolutely uh, sit watching the NFL. By the way, the biggest news night on the NFL, they're going to have sensitivity training for lifestyles. In other words, the National Football League is encouraging, come out if you're gay. Well, I got news. Come out and play if you're gay. The thing is, it's really difficult, and that's, that's, that's a tragedy. Yeah. Man, yeah, V. What, what are your thoughts on all this? I mean, just well, with the uh, with the uh, NFL stuff. Well, and, uh, the... yeah, I mean, is Steve just went through a, a litany of things here that that, uh, and, and and again, I suppose it's uh, it's the cultural or lifestyle of decadence that we're seeing right now. Um, it's an end of end of the western culture as we know it isn't it i mean everything we see right now is just crumbling you know one of the things that i do is study patterns and uh oftentimes throughout history when you study pattern and you see this type of behavior i'm gonna call what is all gay homosexual nonsense first and foremost nobody's born gay it has a lie it has a lie right there it's not genetic Right. If it was genetic, you, we can corner it to specific type of genes, okay, like uh, sickle cell anemia. That's something that's predominant in the African-American community, okay? Uh, they're they're uh, alcoholic genes, all right, for uh, genes for alcohol. That's called GABRA5. We isolate GABRA5 in, in, in different various populations. GABRA5 is pretty high in the Native American population. Uh even when you look at the people from Out Magazine, uh, I think that's like the prominent uh, gay publication, even the editor, the, the editor-in-chief of Out Magazine years ago was saying that, you know what, we need to stop saying that we're born this way. We just accept it for what it is. Okay, that we, it is a choice, and it's a choice that we love. Okay, and, and this is what this whole nonsense is about. Folks, when you study history, before any civilization falls, they get to this level. When a civilization gets to be so decadent and so full of it, you know, so arrogant in its decadence, that's when it begins to accept behavior such as this and push the envelope of normalcy, okay? It's to the point where now I can honestly say it's like, you know, I was telling my wife today, we just moved up on God's uh, judgment list. You know, we are, we are basically number one on that list right now. I mean, it's not enough that we're out there massacring innocent countries with our gunboat foreign diplomacy. It's not enough that we're, you know, we're supporting uh, cannibalistic maniacs who are eating hearts and livers out there in the Middle East. It's not enough that we're maiming and hurting, uh, and we've overthrown over 30 different countries in the last 50 years. Uh, 30 of those countries have been, you know, with the democratic election that we've overthrown. It's not enough of this. On top of that, we've got to thumb our nose against the almighty God and, and say, here you go, stick it. Folks, yeah, we want to uh, pay for this kind of stuff. Exactly. Exactly. And, 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 and V and Steve, I mean, moral and financial decadence go hand in hand. So what we're seeing is just an extension Absolutely. of what the... My gosh. Uh, Steve, I'm going to... I'm going to turn it over to you. I mean, what, uh, well, I'll tell you what, we're at the top of the hour. We're going to take a break. Folks, you're yeah, listening let's to take the a break and, uh, you know, I can go put my head in a uh, sink of yeah. cold water and somebody says, you really do that? 
I got news for you. My T-shirt would testify the truth. Someone said, why don't you go on a webcam? I don't think so. <laughs> you know? uh, but anyway, the thing is, Doug, is I, when we come back, we'll, we'll, we'll give the, the, I would say, the things you've got to do. And, and V is uh, available for consulting. For those of you, you can basically contact him. Obviously, his time is his time and expensive, but he can save you a lot of money. And you contact him, he'll tell you his rates and stuff. And look, we're not out here trolling for silver sales. I, I, I'm, I'm just telling you. Or gold, this is the thing that I told V. I said, V, I don't know. I hope I'm wrong. And this is what Hawk wanted to get at, for us to get at. But I don't think we've got too many more shows on Hagman together. And I don't have a thus saith the Lord of that. It's just the lateness of the hour because, Doug, the time comes. And, and again, look, I don't care. People, people who have never sold an ounce of gold or bought an ounce of gold or maybe bought an ounce of gold or an ounce of silver sometimes become experts, and they're only legends in their own mind. Look, all I can tell you is this, is that I have been blessed with some of the smartest men some of the smartest women in the world who are big-time traders. I'm not saying, I, look, all I can say is we're not in that league, any of us that I know of, but we can at least take the crumbs that fall from their plate. And I would rather eat the crumbs from someone that knows what's happening than eat a plate of Bravo Sierra by the idiots on financial TV. I don't care how pretty they are. I don't care what their uh, you know hairdo looks like, their nails or whatever. Actually, uh, we should probably take them in into account too because they're metrosexuals. The bottom line is, uh, let God arise as enemies be scattered. And by the grace of God tonight, I believe people, the light is turning on. This has nothing to do with the United States. First and foremost, it has everything to do with every believer worldwide. When we come back, we'll address those issues. What everyone has to do is put their priorities in motion and just get set. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. No one who's listened to Hagman and Hagman, any of these shows over the past couple months will be with excuse. They'll be without excuse. We have told you, we have held nothing back. The only thing we would hold back is anything that might hurt you or compromise someone else, and that's it in a nutshell. Exactly. And ladies and gentlemen, I would urge everyone, uh, our archived broadcast with uh, Steve Quayle and V are all together. You can go to HomelandSecurityUS.com, and they are all together from his first broadcast through today, and that'll be up tonight. Uh, I've got to tell you, there's a wealth of information in each one. And I've got to say this, the last time V was on, um, he had uh, talked about China. And uh, it was, uh, the, in fact, it was the headlines you just read here over this past uh, seventy-two hours. So that's how uh, that's how plugged in our guests are. Our guests, of course, Mr. Steve Quayle, stevequayle.com, v the Gorilla Economist, and you, of course, you can find all of his alerts, all of his writings exclusively at stevequail.com. Folks, we're right back in about three and a half minutes. Stay with us. Make sure for the next hour you're buckled up and your tray tables and seat backs are in their upright and locked position. The White House has criticized the Syrian government's promise to hold a referendum, describing it as laughable and accusing the regime of making a mockery of the unrest well, that's amid a swelling chorus within the U.S. calling on Washington to supply anti-Assad fighters with weapons. And as RT's Gaye Nature Chakyan reports, many believe that would make peace impossible. Hawks in Washington calling for the arming of insurgents in Syria. We should start considering all options, including arming the opposition. I'd give them training, I'd give them communications equipment, and then ultimately I'd give them weapons. Experts say arming the fighting groups among the opposition is a sure way to drag the country into a protracted civil war. It will also further marginalize those in the opposition who have advocated nonviolence or who advance political strategies. The more arms that are supplied to the, uh, to the armed factions of the Syrian opposition, the, the more that happens, the less likely it is that there'll be a negotiated solution leading to a ceasefire and a peaceful settlement. They're encouraged, I think, very much by the United States. The civil war in Lebanon went on for uh, 15 years. Absolutely appalling bloodshed. And you can easily see that that could happen in Syria. Like the U.S., Al-Qaeda has endorsed the rebels' fight in Syria. Under President Assad, Syria has been a secular state. 
some analysts argue that one of the reasons why al-Qaeda supports the violent uprising in Syria is that in a less secular environment, it's easier to recruit new terrorists. So if the government um, falls, you'll be looking forward to just a very long period of complete disintegration. They would be able to attract more and more fanatical recruits. Look at the civil war in uh, Iraq in 2006 and 7. It was absolutely appalling. The calls to arm fighting groups in Syria sound even more alarming given the U.S. history of arming radicals. Afghanistan, one example. It was placing itself in alliance with the Mujahideen, including Osama bin Laden, and uh, arming these people who now, of course, it is lately been deploring as fanatical uh, fanatical uh, enemies of the United States. So these these alliances are totally cynical and totally opportunistic. There's not a shred of principle in any of them. But despite the hawks' outcry, the Obama administration is taking a more cautious stance with regards to Syria. We don't think more arms into Syria is the right answer. Some analysts say arming the very much fractured Syrian opposition would contribute to its further radicalization and would make a political solution virtually impossible. A number say Washington might support arms supplies indirectly through its Arab allies. As of now, the administration denies having such plans, but will that position hold? I'm Ganesh Shekhan reporting from Washington, RT. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Doug Hagman here. I'd like to... Uh just to direct you to one of our great sponsors, Grandland Firearms of British Columbia. It's a hunter's paradise. If you're up in British Columbia, go pay them a visit. They're at 522 South Dogwood, unit number 7 in beautiful Campbell River, British Columbia, Canada. The salmon capital of the world. They're, uh, if you... Of course, if you can't get up to British Columbia, visit them on the internet at GrandlandFirearms.com. That's GrandlandFirearms.com. There you will find a full gun stock list. Uh, and, and I'll tell you, if you live in the United States, you can, in fact, purchase from Canada. Just visit your federally licensed firearms dealer. They offer firearms courses as well. And, of course, the full array of hunting and survival gear. That's GrandlandFirearms.com, GrandlandFirearms.com. Truly a hunter's paradise. Doug Hagman, one guy that doesn't need a bullhorn to get your attention. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Hagman and Hagman Report, the third and final hour on this, the 26th day of June 2013. I'm Doug Hagman in studio, along with two very special guests, Steve Quayle, stevequayle.com, v. the Gorilla Economist. If you're in the trenches, and we are, trench warfare, I'll tell you, both gentlemen you want on your side. And we're lucky to have them tonight, sharing their information, their knowledge, their... Uh, well, I'll tell you what, uh, we need this information this hour, of course, we're going to get into what you can do to prepare. Steve V, welcome back. Glad to be back. Uh, there was a, um, uh, there was a thing that I think, uh, Steve asked from Hawk and I've also gotten a, a bunch of emails about the, uh, July 3rd, uh, date and a couple of things I want to clarify. Um, the first thing is, is first and foremost, July 3rd is the middle of the year. Uh, going into this year, I knew there was going to be a lot of volatility in the market. And I knew that it's going to start crescendoing around the middle of the year, uh, July 3rd. And we can expect this summer to be very, very volatile. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I'm very, very concerned about the bond market here in this country. I'm very much concerned with uh, what's happening in uh, you know Japan. It's 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 very serious. 
and uh, bond sell-offs that are continuing to happen. So it's going to be pretty interesting for me to see what type of situation would transpire. Uh, one of the things that I'm concerned about, and uh, in fact that the central bankers are concerned about it as well, uh, is the uh, the selling off of bonds by the fund managers, right? And uh, the fund managers in particular of the two big to fail banks, because if you remember the TARP deal that was done back in 2008 with Hank Paulson, that deal was that, you know, the uh, two big to fails, they had all the benefits of a nationalization without none of the risks. All they had to do was hold U.S. bonds, okay? So, um, if they dis, you know, if the, if the if those fund managers see that people are dumping bonds, you know they get a little itchy uh, with their fingertips, and they might also might want to go ahead and hit the button and, and and sell bonds as well. Now, if that happens, I mean this thing could come down pretty fast. Now, another huge announcement uh, that I want to talk about. Okay, we I've covered uh, what uh, the the German finance minister and uh, twenty seven. Uh, of the eurozone bankers have come to uh, have, have have agreed upon was that eight percent levy, but also the Bank of International Settlements, which is the central bank of central banks that a lot of people you know like to call it. The BIS is basically the the think, the the not only the, the the think tank, but it is also the nerve center of global finance amongst many. I think over fifty four central banks in the world. Particularly, the big four are the main pushers of the BIS. That's the Federal Reserve, the Bank of England, the the Bank of Europe, the I'm sorry, the European Central Bank, and the Bank of Japan. Now, the BIS has already told these central banks to stop stimulating and begin to focus on interest rates. Now, folks, this is pretty serious. Okay, some some uh, headlines that were floating around on the internet, especially Financial Times. Uh, which is a uh, um, a uh, an article, you know, which is actually a uh, you know a newspaper that I read. Uh, the Financial Times is, is very good. You know, the Financial Times gave a, a a headline saying that the BIS signals central banks to head for the exit doors. Folks, that's a serious, serious thing. Now, the last time I was on the show, you know, I told you that we don't have a real economy. Okay, so stop kidding yourself. You don't have a real economy when your central bank is the primary driver of the economy. And when your central ba bank is integral to the health of your economy and to your market and to your housing markets, okay? So if you tell the central bank to all of a sudden stop stimulating, you're going to create a massive credit crunch. You're going to create a massive retraction of currency and liquidity. You're going to create a massive parabolic fall. The big debate, and this is what I'm talking about, I'm going to show you exactly how it ties into the July 3rd, going into the summer of hell, which is what I'm going to call this summer, the summer of hell, in terms of uh, the financial markets, and going into the fall, and possibly into the winter to see it collapse. The big debate right now amongst bankers is this. Okay, We are right now, folks, at the fork in the road. If the car veers to the left... Okay, there are a proponent, and in fact, two Fed presidents actually want this to occur. They want a slow bleed. Okay, they want us to, uh, you know, gradually taper off. It's not going to happen, and I'll tell you why. Okay, that's one arm of this whole thing. Now, there's a whole other group of bankers, and these guys are pretty vocal, and these guys happen to be the majority. Now, these guys, what they want to do is they want to take the car and bear right. Well, what is exit bearing right? Well, I'll tell you what it is. That, when we veer to the right, is basically taking the path of immediate seizure of all liquidity, meaning they're going to stop stimulating. Okay, if they want to stop stimulating, we're going to head for a very quick and fast parabolic crash. Their belief is that they have done enough damage to the system that it's already messed up beyond all repair, okay, that there's no point in dragging this dead animal on. Let's just go ahead and pull it, hammer the economy now, put this whole thing into a, into a massive crash, and then let's try to revalue and purge the system. 
So these are the two things that are being deliberated right now as I'm talking to you. And let me tell you something. The guys that want to go right and crash this thing fast, they have a historical precedent to do so. Because that's what they did in 1929 and in 33 when they contracted the money supply. Okay, they did this on the margin loans. This is the same thing where we are today, but this time it's exponentially worse. And it's made worse because of the outstanding amount of debt that is sitting in the derivatives OTC market. The vast majority of that being the, 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 the toxicity in Forex, uh, currency swaps, as well as interest rate swaps. This is a huge thing. This is inevitable. Okay? So this is a, uh, an issue that, that's going to greatly dictate what's going to happen in the next few months. We're going to see continued market vol vol volatility. And depending on which scenario happens, whether we go left, which is the slow bleed, or we go right, which is the fast collapse, you know, it's going to, you know, predicate a lot of things. And one of the things that I'm also worried about, we have this issue in the Middle East that's taking place. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something. I really do believe this whole Edward Snowden thing is kind of being blown out of proportion. I honestly believe, because this kid, you know, yeah, he leaked the NSA surveillance and how what's being read, emails, all that other stuff. This is stuff we already know. Most people that are awake already know this. He didn't name any names. He didn't name any operations. He didn't name any of that stuff. So I believe this whole Edward Snowden thing, as, 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 as great as it is to, to people who've had their head in the sand for such a long time, um... For the rest of us, I think it is a. It, it, for the most people, actually in the, in the you know in the U.S., I think it's a it, it is a a distraction. And I think it is a distraction from the main issue. What is occurring, and that issue is in the Middle East. There is a gathering storm that right now is going past the point of of no return. And folks, it, it is the beginnings of World War Three. All right. Now, you know, I've heard reports that there was a, a, a boat, a, a massive freighter that was carrying arms and supplies over to these Al-Qaeda rebels that, this, that we're funding, that that boat broke in half and sank in the ocean. Now, if that did happen, which I, and I, I saw I saw the pictures of, this, of that boat going down, that's an act of God. Whether the Russians sank it or not, that is an act of God. And I thank God that that boat went down. Because things are getting very serious over there. So what's happening in the Middle East can be a tinderbox also to how fast the economy goes down over here. What's happening in Japan is a tinderbox to how fast the economy can go down over here. So what we have right now is multiple black swan scenarios. Okay? It's never been like this at any time before. You have multiple scenarios, all of which end badly. There's no sliver of light in this whole thing. There really isn't. You know, the sliver of light is, is basically America goes through a revolution and we take back this country and we reestablish this. But folks, that's a pipe dream. And again, as I said in the beginning of the broadcast, unless you, unless this nation and the men of this nation start to act like men again, and begin to humble themselves and seek the face of their God, the God, the God of heaven, the God of the Bible, and begin to turn their backs on this nonsense, this fake illusionary world that they've sold themselves to captivity with for so long. Unless we do that, there's no coming back from this. That's how hopeless the situation is. For those who don't know the Lord, you're hopeless, man. But for those who have a relationship with God, we're going to make it. We're going to see ourselves through this, not the, the, through the fire and through the flood that is to come. But those are the things that have occurred economically that we're seeing the market just absolutely gyrating. We're, folks, every day with the market, I am staring into the eclipse. Now, Steve talked about I'm going to touch this based upon this real quick, and I'll hand it over to Steve. I call, just to give you guys an idea how scarce things are getting, We talked, you know, Steve talked about the Perth Mint. I call one of the big dealers here in New York, okay, one of the guys I've known for decades, I've, I've, I've bought from this guy so many times, I just gave him a call just to see, you know, just to shoot the breeze and to see where he's at, I said, hey, Seth, how you doing? 
He said, V, I'm doing pretty good. What can I do for you? And I said, Seth, let me ask you a question. I want to get some American Eagle. What's it going to cost you? What's it going to cost me? And this is what this guy said. Well, V, here's the deal. I'll sell it to you for about $24.75, okay? But if you don't spend at least $5,000, i got to hit you with tax. Now, I don't know if you folks know what the sales tax here in New York is. It, it, it's up there. It, it's, you know... It's it's almost nine percent, okay. It's about eight, almost eight and a half percent. So think about this. This never was. There's no law saying that he's got to tax me at at a certain level, but he's throwing this tax in there just to jack up the premiums, okay. If I don't spend five grand, or if I don't spend at least five grand, he's got to hit me with taxes. So what does that twenty four dollars wind up being? It, get, it winds up being close to to thirty dollars. This is the type of games that are being played. Why? Because there's a scarcity in inventory. We see this also occurring with capital controls. Having a more difficult time opening up accounts for Americans internationally. I called one of the biggest banks in Southeast Asia. Can't do it. I mean, these are, these are all signs and symptoms of a broken, insolvent nation turning in on itself. So we are past the point of being hopeless. Wow, Never, Steve. Anybody want? Wow, to you, you, you know, uh, v, v. I was. I'll tell you something. I was talking about the Syrian situation. Libya paved the way. Benghazi paved the way. Benghazi was nothing more than a uh, CIA uh, gun running operation for the anti-Assad rebels in Syria. And, and I think the last time, or, or one of the times before, you and, and me and Steve, we talked about this, um, uh, how we are uh, b becoming entangled uh, in these foreign uh, nation-building uh, exercises, or nation-tearing-down exercises, whatever you want to call them. But, uh, but there is a global... Uh, what would you call it, Steve? A, a global uh, uh, reformation in, in progress here, where, where they want to create this this Ottoman Empire, and and all of this. I, and, and V, correct me if I'm wrong, or Steve, is this not? Are we not seeing this set up here for uh, once again? I have to point to to, to the uh, British Empire, just the the uh, re recreation of the uh, of Camelot, if you will. Well, I think here's what most people don't understand. Why is it that a week ago we hear that Morrissey, the president of Egypt, said the two greatest enemies to Egypt are the United States and Israel, and immediately you hear of multi-billion dollar arms transfers to Egypt and also U.S. troops going to be deployed to help Morrissey stay in power? Twenty years ago, Doug, and this was no one knew what the Iman Mahdi was or who he was. What people do not understand about Islamic eschatology they believe they take over the world, but only after a World War III. They believe there must be a global conflagration in order to facilitate that. One of the president's promises to the world of Islam is, watch what I will do for Islam. Well, I'm watching it every day, but at the expense of Christianity. Now, the thing that most people do not yet understand is the intentional destabilization of all Middle East countries is based on the fact that they, meaning the jihadists, want the return of the Mahdi. Even Ahmadinejad, who's being replaced, said the next time he shows up or appears is with the Mahdi. M-A-H-D-I. For those of you that do not know what I'm talking about, go look it up on Wikipedia or anyplace else. Just get a background. I am Aam, the Imam Mahdi. M-A-H-D-I. When I started talking about that 20 years ago and talking about what would take place, the thing that I said would be a sign of the end times, and I really believe the Lord was so gracious to follow up something that he had me warn his people about. When you saw that Syrian rebel leader cutting open a man's chest and eating his heart and eating his liver, and those are the people we're responsible for, you've got to understand that stands contrary to everything that America used to stand for. So I said my exact words, and Hawk, I think he's never missed a show or very few because he, he reminds me of stuff I said like 20 years ago, and I'd forgotten it. He said, you know, remember, Steve, when you talked about cannibalism being the order of the day, the very first person to talk about zombies, and I talked about uh, Burundunga dust and all that stuff, 
five or six years ago, and that was long before, it, it wasn't before the first zombie movie, but it was before it ever came into the public eye or the public awareness. Now, why is that? I believe that God in his mercy, as you and I and V, and we're talking about this stuff tonight, I believe as we touch on subjects, for some unusual reason, it actually brings it into focus. I can tell you this. When I first started, Doug, and you and I knew each other on the nuclear terrorism that was taking place in the United States that most people never even realized took place, and by the way, it was at the uh, funding from Iran, and I'm not picking on Iran, but they really did fund it and uh, announced a couple months before the eventful night that I called you in the middle of the night and said, I just got a call from a general in special operations who is a believer and said, you guys pray, because if you don't, 29 cities will go up. We all had uh, following you know, verification of that. So why, why am I saying this tonight? Because, ladies and gentlemen, as we're speaking forth, when V is talking about the Bank of International Settlement being the bank to the bankers, when you understand the global upheaval, when you understand that all of your savings and all of your retirements, this is the question I'm going to deal with right now. If you are, you need, those of you who have 401Ks, 403Bs, IRAs, KILs, and all that stuff, if you want to know whether you should quit your job or not, I'm not telling you to quit your job. I'm saying the only way I know with that that uh, requirement in place is to borrow against your 401Ks, your IRAs, etc., but the thing is, is that if you know that you're going to be soon fired, then by all means, if you're if you're getting nervous, if you're hearing scuttlebutt, then by all means, if you've got you know, and some people have two, three, four hundred thousand. I think the guy sent me an email a couple of days ago said he had four hundred thousand. What should he do? And I, here's what I predicate: first of all, don't look to me to make your decision, but let me give you my best advice. Go to the Lord. If you are going to be, and that's if you're a Christian, if you're going to be fired or you see that others are being promoted and you're not, and you see that you're the only Christian and everybody else isn't, and that you're being basically ostracized or set apart, then you can pretty much take it that the decisions being made in management to probably cause you great frustration to get you to quit. Then go ahead and quit by all means. If you can secure another job prior to that, then try and secure another job. But let, let me make it clear. The job industry or the industries that would provide jobs in America, guess why they want amnesty? They want to bring in, uh, quote, illegal immigrants who will work for way less than you will, and they make more profit. That's the bottom line. So if you're a, and I, I'm, I'm sorry this isn't a racist statement, but if you're a white guy and you're basically tenured and you're close to retirement, I think it would be wise to know the macro movements that are against you in this country. It's just like we're hearing right now on the uh, Trayvon Martin thing. If, 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 if uh, what's his name is found guilty of uh, shooting him, there's going to be riots. Well, there's going to be riots, period. We've already had the story of the pregnant lady being uh, murdered in Dayton, Ohio, uh, by, you know, the, the, the country is primed. And here's, let me make a certain two-word statement that will sum up everything that's going to take place. Those who hate you, they want payback. And payback is simply stated, they want you dead. It doesn't matter. Whoever is bitter is going to allow that root of bitterness not only to destroy them, but to destroy you. Saying all that, here's where my concern is, Doug, is really simple. For those of you that want to get a hold of V, his, his uh, address is gorillaeconomist at gmail.com. And gorilla, let me spell it for you, because everybody spells that wrong. G-U-E-R-R-I-L-L-A, economist at gmail.com. If you're interested in, in getting his consulting and those of you with big portfolios and, and, and just the questions, he's the guy to talk to. For those of you that need to uh, move quickly, swiftly, I, I, I'm only saying this. You can get a hold of me at steve777 at stevequail.com. Just put on the, the subject matter, a line, metals, best time to call in your phone number. Metals, best time to call on your phone number. For those of you who are asking me, you've got $1,000 left to your name, should you buy silver? Absolutely not. You need to be buying your food. Food, 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 food. Doug, I'm saying it seven times on purpose. And if I went for the extra one, that's just thrown in for, uh, for um, you know, the exclamation mark. The point is, is that 
what we are seeing is the orchestrated takedown of the dollar-based economies. They are doing this in order to do two things, pillage and plunder the American middle class. Pillage, plunder, and then kill. That's the purpose, ladies and gentlemen, of putting all of 40 to 50 million Americans either to death or in prison. Because when you go, all your stuff, your pretty little vases, uh, you know, my antique maps, whatever they get, they get. And that's all got value. And remember this, the soul that is filled with lust, in this case, lust for power and lust for your stuff will never be satisfied. That's why they openly mock the stupidity. They being the Canadian general that was heard in the open, and Hawk went into great detail about that. And I know the guy that heard it in the open, and I can only tell you this, whether you believe it or not, who do you think is going to pay all these troops that are here? If you haven't seen that, what is it, 10 uh, divisions of troops are going to be done away with? The American military can't afford, the American Navy can't afford to put uh, fuel in its uh, uh Oh, good night. Uh, aircraft carriers, etc. But you can sure have billions or or hundreds of billions of dollars for everything necessary for the DHS. Let me tell you, gentlemen in the military, you've been sold out by the Pentagon. They are going to come up with a civilian military, not not taking an oath of loyalty to the Constitution, to the Republic, or the United States flag. They're going to take an a, a oath to uh, the dictator that's building a civilian army. That's where all the bullets are going. And it's going to be, hey, guess what? It's going to be the uh, uh, work project of this century, but you're going to have not brown shirts. You're going to have black, you know, black-suited guys, MP5s. That's an H&K, usually 9mm uh, submachine gun or 40 caliber. That's what the FBI uses. The point being is you're going to have those people enforcing the private edicts of a tyrant and a dictator. You know, Doug, I don't know how to make it any plainer than that. The thing that I'm telling you, if you're playing in the paper market, and B knows this better than anyone, it's stacked against you. You cannot compete on an HFT program. That's uh, our platform, high-frequency trading. But when you buy gold or you buy silver or you buy platinum and palladium, and if any of you got big money and you want to basically secure a position, when I say big money, you call me and I'll tell you, and it's money that you want to have a historic rate of return, that's when the Chinese will come to get, pay whatever you want. You're not going to convert your platinum and palladium into fiat currency. You're going to convert it into stuff you need or want. So the point is, just send me an email, steve777 at stevequail.com. Put in the subject line, metals, your name, phone number, best time to call, and I'll get back to you. Doug, the thing is, is that I had a talk with everybody that works for me, which happens to be, I'm a pretty low employee. I've got two employees, and one of them is just part-time. You know, my son fills in, and then another one. And I said, listen, guys, I know this, that if the COMEX goes down, the NYMEX goes down, and the big, and this is the biggest, most critical issue I can explain, if the mega distributors cannot offset their risk, by putting in futures and trying to secure an inventory position and keeping delta neutral, meaning they don't lose money on every trade, that's the end of the physical market being able to supply anything to anyone. And none of us dealers are going to sell metal for paper money because we know paper money will buy nothing. So you're, and I don't know if it's if it's the fourth. I don't know if it's September, October. I don't know when. But I'm just saying to you, all of the uh, signals for the perfect financial storm are absolutely in place. They are absolutely blowing at F5 category speeds. We are seeing hurricanes, tornadoes, volcanoes. We're seeing everything. And just as that is in the geologic world or the physical world, we're seeing the same thing in the spiritual world. Pray. Pray, pray. And I'm telling you, the, the parable of the ten the talents is as real as any other parable. And what Jesus was trying to teach in that is obvious, that you need to be faithful what God's given to you. There's no glory in saying, yeah, I had a million-dollar stock portfolio, but I lost it all because listen to my financial planner. And, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's not a very good testimony. At the same time, we understand better than anybody who can tell you more why the physical market is diverging from the spot market. The spot, let me make it easy. 
All the down movements in the metals are not physical. You cannot even trace one big sale physical. Uh, uh, Lloyd, my, my good friend, told me that four, he sent me an email last night, I think around 10, 10.30, saying 4,000 contracts of gold were dumped instantly. Well, the people that are doing that are manipulating it, but it was contracts, it's paper. All the suspicious stock trades, all the commodity shenanigans, everything is screaming manipulation. The only way to get out of the market is to have it in the hand, and I leave with this, and I turn it over to V. If you can't touch it, you don't own it. Gold, silver, platinum, palladium are the only assets that are not at the same time someone else's liability. In other words, there are no claims or can be no claims against what you hold. You put it in, uh, I love it, you put it in a segregated account with MF Global, they steal it. You put it in the COMEX, they don't deliver it. You put it in the Hong Kong Metals Exchange, they don't have it. You put it here, you put it there, guess what? It goes there and you don't have it. And you keep it a safety deposit box. Anybody from this point on who keeps any metals or any cash in a safety deposit box is asking for a, a, and I don't care what the bankers tell you, there are federal rules, they can go in, they, and take it. Do not put your metals in a safety deposit box. And, Doug, I turn it back over to V. You know, I've had a, a lot of emails uh, from people asking me what to do with my depository uh, vaults. Uh, let me tell you guys something. Uh, we, we're getting reports, and I got reports of basically uh, what we've seen is, let's just, uh, one example would be a trader who uh, was, he was a broker. He had his client's money in a particular depository. When the time came that he wanted to move from one depository in one part of the country to another depository in another part of the country for his client, there was a delay. You know, the, uh, the, deposit, uh, the, the, the depository that was holding the gold and the silver, particularly the gold, was throwing up all sorts of excuses, you know, delaying the inevitable for, you know, weeks on end. Finally, when they took delivery of the gold bars, they looked at the uh, bars and they found out that the serial numbers do not match what was originally allocated to that particular depository. So upon further investigation, you see that the depository, when they were given the metals, they did something with it. Well, let me tell you what they're doing. All the time, these depositories have a second set of books, okay? And these second set of books is basically where they have another allocated account, which they will use your gold or your silver sometimes. I'm not saying it's every single one of these depositories out there, but there are ones that actually take it and go ahead and on the back end, go and pay on the market and use your gold and silver as collateral. So that's why when they took delivery, this particular broker for his customer, the serial numbers were different because the original was lost. It was gone. And they, and they stalled for a week or so or two weeks because they had to get back what was lost. Okay? So when you don't have something in your possession, you really don't own it. Another thing people ask me is about secure safe, uh, safe deposit boxes. Those are not secure. Anything you put in a bank is not secure because you're not a, a you're not a depository. You're a creditor to the bank, and because of the laws of rehypothecation, anything in that bank is going to be worth rating. Now, if you have a uh, you know uh, gold or silver in a depository or in a safe deposit box, they will rate it, and in place of that metal, they you, they will give you an IOU saying that they'll eventually pay you back anywhere between zero to ninety nine years, kind of like the FDIC. Or they will give you cash value in worthless Federal Reserve notes after which, you know, uh, you know, after taking into account any type of capital gains tax or penalties that you would have to pay uh, for those metals. So you see, folks, the only way to get around the system currently, okay, because look, you got to get it into your heads, and I can't emphasize this enough. This is not a free market system. We do not have a real economy. We have a bunch of cartels that operate above the law that are dictating the financial and fiduciary uh, 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 monopoly uh, that's basically what we're calling a, a, a market. And that's the issue here, okay? Uh, because of the fact that things are so convoluted, we can't with confidence invest in a system like this. So the way you get around this system is you have to get gold and silver. 
the way you get around it is you'd have to get you know, precious metals because it's not a legal obligation for somebody else. It's not somebody else's debt. It's your way of preserving your wealth. And that's the fundamental thing that you have to get into your head. People think, oh, you know, I got $20 million in the bank. You got nothing. You got 20 million Federal Reserve notes on a computer screen. Big whoopee. Who cares? Okay? You don't have real tangible assets. Oh, I have a house. Do you have a mortgage on it? Oh, yes, I did. Well, here's the thing. I always tell people, look, don't worry about your mortgage in a hyperinflationary environment. And uh, push comes to sell. I mean, push comes to sell. Push comes to shove. You know, and if you do, you know, if they, if they do a recall on all the on the loans, depending on who owns it, you know, it, you know, it, you can, you might be affected. But the point is, is the most important thing is, is if you have the the, the proper means, proper pro, uh, precious metals in a hyperinflationary environment, you can pay that mortgage off in a song. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about some creditor coming knocking on your door, hey, you want to repo your house. No, you can't. I've already paid for it. Here's the note. How did I do that? Well, simple. I paid for it in gold. I paid for it in silver. Okay, so the, we're going to start, because we're going to head into a collapse, you're going to see a burgeoning market, a burgeoning black market that is going to emerge. We're going to have our own shadow banking system. And this time around, it's going to be done by real capitalists. It's going to be done by real individuals that want real trade and that want real transactions for real tangible things. And that's going to be a very hard thing for in the, in the, in the short term for this government to control. So I can't emphasize to you guys how important it is to have real tangible assets and how important it is for you to move into that. I mean, the market has been very, very, very extremely volatile. You know, there's just too many things. I mean, people are always asking for time frames. Look, I don't see this. I see some major events occurring this summer. It's going to cascade into the fall, crescendo into the winter, and we're going to either be in a full-scale war or collapse by 2014, the latest. I don't see this thing going past 2015. I really don't. And that's my take. My goodness. Uh, but, 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 you know, folks, we can... By heeding the advice of Steve Quayle and by V, the guerrilla economist, we can we can survive. We can prepare. I mean, we have. You've heard all of the necessary steps to take tonight. Uh, you know what, Steve? I don't think there can be any other questions. V, I, I think you've covered it so well. Uh, what else can What else can you say? What else? Food, water, metals, prey. Because we're not going to stop what's coming. Hey, Doug. Yes. I want to add one other thing. You know, I I prayed for the other night, and we'll do it again on Sunday night. That's not the nature of tonight's show. But I prayed for loneliness. And here's what I want people to understand. There's a promise in the Word of God that I'm believing for all my, my, my single listeners, our single listeners, all over the world, okay? It doesn't matter if I have people in the outback that somehow get this thing through satellite or whatever, and they're saying the same thing. The same thing is worldwide. When we pray, our Father which is in heaven, God is the, uh, the originator of families. God himself is going to bring his family back together. God himself is going to enable, empower, provide, protect and provision his people. But he's also going to give them that wonderful thing. You know, the scripture says, by this shall men know that you are mine, that you have love uh, one for another. I have yet to see that expressed in the body. Because, again, you know, the thing is, it's not talking about a human carnal love. It's talking about God's love. You cannot manifest God's love without God's power. Uh, it's just like, you know, you, you both uh, have been blessed by Pastor Bruce, okay? Man, that guy radiates love. I mean, he is probably the happiest man in the Lord that I've ever known met, you know? He truly does. But what I want for the people of God is for the Lord to bring you best friends. Now, obviously, Jesus is my best friend. Uh, I have not been his best friend, but he's never failed me, or he's never let me down. I wish I could say the same, but I, I can't. It'd be a lie. 
But I'm praying that those of you who are alone, I'm praying for Barbara K. I'm praying for Barbara F. I'm praying for everybody out there that you will have a absolute guided life, and God will bring in the right people. Please pray this. Lord, I heard Steve say that you told him once that if we would trust you, you would give us better friends than we choose for ourselves. I can literally say that has been fulfilled in my life, and I can tell you this, I have a lot of people that love me one day and hate me the next. I also have the friends that absolutely, they know I'm flawed. They know it. I mean, I make sure they know, and I don't need to tell them. But the bottom line is, you guys, we all need that. We all need, and there are some amazing pastors uh, Pastor John Kyle Billings, okay, a friend of mine, a mighty man of God, probably the smallest congregation in Billings, yet people want what they think they want instead of what God knows they need. And it's why Jesus wept. It's why it's like we're scattered sheep. It's like why we're being so effective, Doug, Joe, and V across the world, because we're speaking to the lost sheep. We're after the people that had bowed their head in honesty, even in sin, knowing what they're doing. And I'll tell you one thing, they'll come into the kingdom before the self-righteous Pharisees that go on Sunday, deny Jesus, and think because they sit in a pew, they don't stink, okay? If you don't want to stink, don't go where someplace that has the word pew. At least sit in a place that has a chair. Because, again, I'm not trying to be corny. I'm trying to be absolutely uh, blunt. Everybody needs fellowship. And what you guys provide, Joe and Doug, on Sunday night is a worldwide communion table with a fellowship of like-minded believers that are absolutely desperate for reality in God. I, I can't tell you, with no exaggeration, dozens and dozens of emails, there is not one email that I cannot sense the cry or the heart of the people that are saying they, they want fellowship. They want fellowship with like-minded believers. And I'll tell you what, I'm, and when Bruce is ready, I'll bring him on with us on the show, because that he's got, a, a, and I'm saying this, a wonderful ability to, to transmit to literally uh, impart that 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 place he's achieved in the Lord, he's 64, 65. But, brother, I'll tell you what, it makes you hungry when you hear somebody with the joy of the Lord. It makes you happy when someone flows in the word of knowledge and when God literally gives people the word of knowledge through somebody like him. And it, it doesn't condemn, it doesn't rub your nose in your sin. Good night. Most of us rub our own noses in our own sin or let the devil do it. But when someone gives you the word of the Lord, and the word of the Lord is always to his people compassionate. God wants us to repent for our sake. He doesn't rub our nose in a sin. He, the Holy Spirit quickens you. And you want to know the difference? I've got to say this because this is where I'm being led. The difference between conviction and condemnation. Conviction's instant. Condemnation is like continual. If you are being continually conv- or condemned, that's the devil. That's not God. If the Spirit of God says, Steve, you need to repent of that, you shouldn't have said it that way, you are angry, I have to repent. But when, it, when I hear over and over and over, you're no good, you're worthless, you, you'd be better off being silent forever, that's the devil. So it's kind of like we get to the scripture, Doug, whose report will we believe? I'm grateful for every single brother and sister worldwide that gets to have communion served to you by Pastor David Langford. Because I told David the other night, I said, David, you went from a, a pastor uh, in, in North Carolina to being basically a pastor over the whole flock of the living God. I said, that's a lot of responsibility, brother. I'm sure glad God called you to do it and not me. I don't have that skill or ability or calling. But what I do have is the ability to put people into a framework of understanding that Jesus is real. I can't tell you the emails. Doug, you get them too, and, and, oh, sure. and you, you, I send them to you and you get them yourself. People are coming to Jesus from all over the world. Is that an accurate statement? Am I embellishing it? Am I doing anything outside of just telling it like it is? Oh, oh no, Steve, I'll tell you what. I, in fact, I haven't sent you half of the emails that, that I've received from, I don't know, I think from every continent in uh, most countries I can think of 
that uh, have enjoyed the fellowship on uh, uh, Sunday night have gotten so much out of it. And, and just like tonight with these economic uh, broadcasts as well with V, with his knowledge, with his wisdom, I mean, people are coming together. And, and, and see, that, that that is, to me, that's so great because no one, as you, as you started out by saying, Steve, we're not alone. You're not alone out there because, I mean, I look at this as, as our extended family. So no, no embellishment at all, my friend. Here's the other thing that I really want everyone tonight who is a believer worldwide to ask the Lord. I want them to ask the Lord to give them their own personal strategy for dealing with the system that's going to be thrust upon them and how to skirt it. Let me make it clear. I get more emails on a week than I ever would have thought imagined where the disconnect, here's a great disconnect, and then V, you can address this, it's only a two-minute statement on my part. Christians somehow want to know how they will be able to exist in the Antichrist system and not take the mark of the beast and be able to use their gold and silver within that system. Here's the real simple answer, quail, you won't be able to. You will not be able to. Just as the Lord knows his own, and and just as the devil knows his own, the devil also knows who's the Lord's. So, ladies and gentlemen, the pressure is upon you. I'll tell you what, it's a whole lot easier to come on over to where the living waters are tonight and to quit running from the Lord. I I learned a real valuable lesson as an absolute abject uh, uh, renegade coming to Jesus, knowing nothing about him. It's always easier to run to him than run from him. Running from him is a hard way. Running to him is one of the most amazing things in the world that God, who is holy, just, faithful, true, and righteous, and you're going to see his justice, you're going to see the other side of God, the angry at, the, at sin uh, every day, you're going to see him judge the very things he, he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, Tyre and Sidon for. You're going to see that. And you're going to see the wicked congregate come together, all in their feasts and their worship of hell. And at that point, the Lord knows how to preserve the day of the wicked. Or the, the, he knows how to preserve the wicked under the day of judgment. But he also has a tendency, when something is so heinous, so wicked, so completely confrontational to the very foundations of creation, he acts. And God will act in time and space. And this is is not over yet and people you can basically if you want to side with the world then why don't you just do it what you do now just deny jesus and go over to the devil's side because you're either going to have to stand with the lord or stand against him and doug well i'm saying this this is another caution for those of you that have sent me hundreds of emails over the years from some people they will not endure sound doctrine do not open your mouth to family members. Do not open your mouth to friends unless you are prompted to by the Lord himself. Because until they're ready to hear, they're just going to consider you a nutcase. And remember this when it comes to preparation. The skeptics won't prepare, but they will remember that you did. And that's pretty much it for me, Doug. Go ahead, V, close it out. That's powerful. And, you know, and that's right, V, you go ahead and uh, you have the last word. Well, one of the things that uh, people have to realize is this, okay, when I come up with an investment idea, I never go to a family member first, okay? It just it doesn't it doesn't make any sense uh, because, you know, it, I don't know what it is, but, you know, Jesus nailed it when he said, um, you know, a man is without honor amongst his own house and in his own family. And uh, so you know, that, that saying holds true. What you need to do is, you know, you take the information and you got to figure out a way to, to get the, you know, if you got the money to do it, get your medals. Uh, you know, you, if you need help, okay, you can contact me at uh, Gorilla Economist, G U E R R I L L A, economist at gmail.com. Uh, you know, I've had people say, uh, ask me a question, why do I work with Steve? Well, it's simple. Steve's a man of integrity, I love him as a brother. And one of the things that people don't know is that when you when you do, you know, purchase metals from Steve and when you do consult with me, folks, there's a portion of, of what we make. We put it right back to the ministries that need help. Now, we're talking about frontline ministries, okay? You're not going to catch V or Steve tithing over to some, uh, some fruitcakes uh, megachurch uh, out in San Antonio or, or in Dallas, Texas or something like that. Uh, we're not going to do that. 
we're, we're, we're basically given a portion of what God has blessed us with. We give it back to ministries that are on the front lines, exposing the darkness. And that's what this is all about, all right? So, you know, going forward, again, if you need help, reach out to me, economist at gmail.com. I'm able to help you. If you need medals real quick, like yesterday, uh, call Steve. You know, you, you can go to his website, stevequill.com. There's a contact number over there. Or you can email him at steve777 at stevequill.com. Uh, reach out to us. We're able to help you. Uh, we work as a team to make sure that you're taken care of. And, folks, it's, it's time's critical. Like, you know, Steve said, when me and Steve talked earlier today, I don't know how many more programs I could come on. I don't know. Steve doesn't know how many times he can come on Doug's show. We have no idea what's going to happen. We have no idea, you know, what's around the corner in terms of our ability to come on the air. We don't know. So the little bit of time that God has blessed us with, you know, we're reaching out to you guys. We're reaching out to you that if you could hear our voice, okay, if you can hear the voice, turn from your ways, okay? Turn from drinking the Kool-Aid. Turn from the Kool-Aid that is called American exceptionalism. There's nothing exceptional about us anymore. We're exceptional in our sin. That's the only thing that's exceptional about us. We're no longer the good guys. We're the bad guys. And there, we can't root for a team like this, folks. We need to turn towards the Lord, the living God, Allow him to work in us and through us and to fulfill his will for us. And that's the most important thing at the end of the day. The, the things that are going on in the marketplace, uh, you know, these things will be. You know, like I said, you know, how can I describe to you a train wreck? It's a train wreck. It's, it, it's, going, to be, it, it's going to be disastrous for, the, for those who live in this country. Absolutely disastrous. You know, the next few months are going to be critical. Uh, you guys can follow my alerts on stevequill.com. I also, every every client of mine that's on my email list or that I've consulted with, you're on my email list, so when the big major alert will come forth, you all will have it as well. So, you know, heads up. I mean, this is it. Uh, you know, strap in your seat, seat belts, and uh, we're in for a very bumpy ride. Gentlemen, I want to thank you both for coming on. Humbly thank you on behalf of Joe, myself. I want to thank you for just another tremendous broadcast. Uh, God bless you both. And uh, indeed, uh, we are brothers and we're all in this together. But but uh, my thanks, our thanks to you for uh, sharing your information. Good night, everyone. God good, bless good, you all. Good night, Steve. V, good, good night. night gentlemen. Good night. Good night, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we were blessed, certainly blessed, by having Steve Quayle and V on tonight. Uh, SteveQuayle.com, V, the Gorilla Economist. Um, I just want to say, Joe, I had to leave a little bit early tonight. In closing, I just want to say this. Uh, I, I want to humbly thank each and every one of you for listening tonight, for listening to our broadcast, for praying for us, for spreading the word about these broadcasts. You know, there's something to me. There's something very special about about these programs. And, and, you know, the worst thing that we can do right now is panic. The best thing perhaps we can do, and this is just from me, from somebody that really doesn't know a whole lot but, uh, but listens a whole lot, the best thing that we can do is to just very simply, very calmly, talk to our loved ones wherever they're at and and you know if if they're not on board with you right now 100% i do feel that the coming events will cause them to get on board with you we're hearing from families in every country of the world who are saying you know my wife or my husband they just don't believe they don't believe that there's anything wrong or or that we're hyping up the nature of the problem, and, and, and that's not the case. So the best thing that you can do is exercise patience. Understand that we all come to that level of reality at our own pace. I know <laughs> it took me a long time to really get to where I'm at in terms of my level of understanding. I'm a pretty hard sell, and I'm a pretty dense guy sometimes. So have, have patience, have compassion. But the best thing we can do is just to grab the hand of our loved one 
walk them to the lifeboats just very quietly, very calmly. Be the leaders. Be your own be the leader in your own sphere of influence. And as V and Steve said it as well, prepare food, water, and of course American Survival Wholesale dot com. They've got everything you need. Prepare food, water, precious metals, but perhaps most important of all is prayer. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, again, I want to humbly thank you from the bottom of my heart. And on behalf of Joe, I want to thank you very much for listening to the Hagman Hagman Report. If you like what you hear, if you like what you heard, please share this broadcast with a friend, a family member, a neighbor. Let them know about our program, 8 to 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Tomorrow night, Pastor Paul Begley will be on from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And we're going to be on his show in the afternoon as well. And then on Friday, 90 seconds, we have a very special guest, um, very, very special guest, the author of the book, As the Darkness Falls, Mr. Daniel Holdings. He will be on uh, for two hours on Friday. You can check our schedule out at homelandsecurityus.com. Thank you, folks, for listening. God bless. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. 60 seconds.